game. We are ready to get underway. And it's going to be Raphael Cooper to take it at the five-yard line, taking it to the left and slips and falls. And we have a penalty marker on the play. On the play. So we'll check out the flag. Conference USA officiating crew, that's Randy Smith, our referee in this crew today. And it's going to be against Louisville. And that's one thing that John L. Smith was not pleased with last week, the number of penalties. As you look at Chris Redman, last week against Tulane, he broke his own Conference USA and UofL records, and that's where he ranks overall, just short incompletions, or excuse me, in attempts, and too shy in TDs. Of course, those records held by Jay Gruden, but now junior Chris Redman has already moved up to the top of the passing charts in several categories. He'll be leading the Cardinal offense out on the field, and Louisville will start deep in its own territory after that penalty from the 11-yard line. Now they're taking some time to get everything straightened out. And that's Redmond's numbers in 1998. Over 2,400 yards already, and last week was just incredible with the school and conference record. Broke his own marks from earlier this year with 477 yards. And out of the shotgun, they give it off to Collins, and Collins gets some good yardage to about the 15, and then he's knocked down hard by Camille Shakir, the middle linebacker. How about the Saturday Louisville starting lineups first for Louisville? You see the change on the weak guard, John Susky, in for the injured Josh Richardson, who's out. And that's the rest of the offensive line. And the backs and receivers. Ivan Green back for full time this week since he was able to practice from the week before. And three of those receivers caught passes for over 100 yards a week ago against Tulane. On second down, this one comes to Arnold Jackson. Jackson has the first down and dances for more. Pushed out of bounds at the 29, but it's the first first down in the game. Ian Williams, the weak side linebacker. How about that defense for the Tigers? A good defensive line, particularly Fryer and Bowling. The Louisville coaching staff very impressed with those gentlemen. And the linebacking core that we talked about, young but yet talented. The big problem, though, for Memphis has been in the secondary, and we had a late change with Glenn Sumter in at free safety. First and 10 Cardinals out to the 29-yard line, just underway, a scoreless game in the first quarter on homecoming day. Glad to have you along live on Fox. This one through the hands of Arnold Jackson, almost picked off. It was Glenn Sumter who got the right in start today had that one go right through his hands after jackson first had the chance at it and you will see all kinds of different personnel in the secondary because of that because of that injury and that really hurts and you know the one thing that louisville has done over the last few ball games no drop passes they've been catching everything i mean Three guys with over 100 yards. That's because they're catching the football. And that was the first time that happened in Cardinal football history. Three in the same game. Collins trying to get it outside. A penalty marker comes in very late. Would probably indicate a holding call up at the 35-yard line against Sumter, the freshman out of Detroit. Number 42, the free safety today. He actually replaces Idris Bashir, who broke his arm in practice this week and that is the preliminary signal holding against the Cardinals and right now the Cardinals are hurting themselves once the beginning of the ball game with the first play with on special teams the offense, 10 yard penalty, still second down on the special teams with the penalty to push him back and on a running play by Collins Collins is a guy who can make it to the outside with speed and has the power to run up the middle. So if you're a wide receiver blocking, you have to be very sure that you can make a block and not interfere with Collins' ability to run the football. Second and long, second and about 17. A check with me by Redmond at the line of scrimmage. And he's back to throw. Fires, and it's complete to Arnold Jackson. Jackson got several yards back to the 32. Pulled out of bounds by Reginald Howard out of Kirby High School in Memphis, a junior, 5'11", 187 pounder. And what about Arnold Jackson a week ago? A career high 12 catches. You see his seasonal numbers, but last week, 12 catches, 132, and a touchdown. Those are all career highs. 
Boy, and what that did last week for Lavelle Boyd, allowing him to catch 10 balls, but if you watch film and you're on the opposition, you know that Jackson can push you off downfield. I mean, he is good at getting downfield, pushing the defensive back away. Louisville's been good on third down. They have a big one here. Redmond flushed out of the pocket. Another penalty marker. Catch made by Lavelle Boyd, but first of all, he was out of bounds. And secondly, there's a penalty on the play. Well, Lavelle Boyd last week, Lewis mentioned a three over 100 in receiving. Well, John L. Smith saw Boyd catch 10 passes. Well, this one's going to be against Memphis for 146. Well, you like what Chris Redmond is doing early in the ballgame. I mean, he has been sacked on occasions where, boy, that looks very close to being in bounds. Maybe he wasn't, maybe he was, but... Yeah, John L. is doing a little officiating, a little... I'm going to tell you Holding what the call should have the been. Defense. 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, good fortune for the Cardinals to get that penalty against Memphis because it certainly appeared as if Boyd had one foot in bounds and in collegiate football, that's all is required for a legal catch. That is now at the U of L 42 yard line. So now brings it out to the 42 yard line, first and 10, Rip Shear. Fourth year at Memphis, had a big win against Tennessee a couple of years ago that got him a contract extension to the year 2001. Collins loses his footing as he slips and falls at Leroy about the 41-yard line, so lost a yard. Camille Shakir, redshirt sophomore, who was a 97 freshman All-American, according to Sporting News, out of Norcross, Georgia, came up quickly on that slippage by... Leroy Collins, we talked about this sports grass, and I think as it certainly takes hold later, you'll see the footing improve all the time, but as John L. Smith said the last time they played here, they set a school record with over 700 yards in offense. He said, I think it's pretty good. Right across the middle, Collins had it and dropped it. A little delay to Leroy Collins. Looked like Collins had all kinds of room, Lewis, but he forgot the ball. Yeah, and already we've seen a couple of balls drop in this ball game. Collins on the last play in Jackson earlier. And those are the kinds of things that haven't been happening to him over the last few ball games. And uh, speaking of a guy, we talked about Arnold Jackson because teams are paying so much attention to him. It is open up the field for guys, Lavelle Boyd and, and Shetfield. Taffo Motor Company, the presenter of our first quarter of play here on the Cards on Fox. This one intended by Charles Sheffield incomplete. Mass intended for Sheffield. Shakir, again, the middle linebacker, had help from Styles, the strong linebacker. And Louisville now faces a fourth down situation, and we'll see Jeremy Borseth check in. So the Memphis defense, you know, has to feel pretty good because they knew they were facing the fourth best offense in the country and the most productive one in Conference USA in 1998. Borseth gets the kick away. The dangerous Dotson fumbled the ball, but he was fortunately there to get it back. Damian Dotson can hurt you in a lot of ways, but he lost the handle, but fortunately for Memphis, was able to get it back, a 34-yard punt. Well, Dotson, the sure-handed wide receiver, is going to let this one get away, but look at the presence here, and because that was a rather low kick, the punting team really didn't have what we're not in the position to really get down there in the area and then allow Dotson to make the recovery. So we see the Tiger offense come on the field for the first time led by redshirt sophomore Kenton Evans. He's been one of three quarterbacks that have played this year. And he lines them up in an eye formation backfield. They like to run the football to this guy, Gerald Arnold. He had nothing immediately, but able to fight forward for a couple yards. Courtney Dinkins on the stop. Saturn and Louisville starting lineup for the Memphis offense. You see the offensive line, a big offensive line, not real agile of foot, but certainly can move the ball on the ground with Gerald Arnold behind them, and Arnold, one of the backs and receiving core. Damian Dotson, number nine, is the guy you got to watch for the Memphis Tigers offensively. Gain of two, second and eight, we'll call it. And again, this sweep goes to the outside to Arnold. Gerald Arnold, the red shirt junior, 5'8", 194-pounder, knocked down by Rashad Harris. 
The Saturn and Louisville starting lineups defensively for Louisville. Gantos, Kennedy, Bonner, and Sexton. Otis Floyd will get a lot of playing time at defensive end. Herring, Harris, and Stalling, good young linebackers. And Roundtree, Holman actually not getting the start today. Louisville going with Kevin Ware, we found out, at the cornerback position. And, of course, Courtney Dinkins, the strong side safety. Third and short. Less than one. A straight eye with the fullback lead, and Memphis has the first down to Gerald Arnold. Arnold against Cincinnati a week ago had his best That's a Memphis day of the down. year. Xavier Burrell on the stop against Arnold. Arnold is 5'8", 194, and you'll see him get the first down here. Low to the ground. And we see the lead block, and you would expect a lot of this today. The, in the eye back, you will see the toss, you will see the counter, you will see some... Uh, draws as well, but it will be a two-back formation for most of the day with this guy, Gerald Arnold, running the football. Four-yard average, 12 yards on three attempts for Arnold so far in this one. And now Evans to throw wide open to the near side as the tight end, Billy Kendall. And Kendall has the first down. Well, Louisville lost somebody on the assignment. Free safety Xavier Burrell finally came over. Billy Kendall, that's only his eighth catch of the year. But Bud Herring kind of got lost there a little bit. Well, Billy Kendall is a big target. He is 6'5", but you will see Bud Herring watching number 20 show up and some confusion on exactly where people are supposed to be on this particular play. And these are the kind of plays that they don't need. 25-yard pickup at Memphis. In business at the Louisville 38-yard line. Looks like an option to the far side. And Arnold gets the carry and a flag on the play as well. Again, Xavier Burrell, the free safety. He had 46 tackles coming into the game. And he had to come up and bring down the very strong Gerald Arnold. But it's going to come back with a holding penalty. Well, we talked about Gerald Arnold against Cincinnati a week ago. 18 rushes, 123 is yardage total. And he also scored a touchdown. On the offense, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. So they're going to mark. So the penalty brings it back to the 48-yard line. Still first down, but first and 19. Out of the shotgun is Kitten Evans for the first time. This guy's got a rocket arm, and he's looking for Dotson, who's open and almost made a diving catch. Wow, Dotson had to go off his fingertips at the 22. Roundtree actually recovered late on the play, but just off the fingertips of Damian Dotson. And I think he's shaken up on the play. Well, Evans is the quarterback who's had a number of passes return for touchdowns and interception but watch this one this one is right on the money to Dotson and he has to make a a leap and grab and just as he hits the ground the football is going to come out I mean that is a great attempt by Dotson this copyrighted telecast is authorized under rights granted to WDRB WFTE by the University of Louisville Athletic Association any use of this telecast without the express written permission is prohibited couldn't have a better day for football Memphis, second and 19. Out of the shotgun. And they give it off to Arnold. Arnold didn't find anything in the middle, and he's rustled down by Bud Herring. Bud Herring, a nice play on the outside linebacker side. Well, it's a beautiful day here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, so how about a Papa's defensive play by Bud Herring? Forces a third and 23, only 26% on the year for the Tigers. They want to set up a screen. Now they throw long to Dotson, and he catches this one, but out of bounds. Again, Roundtree on the coverage, and Lewis, that was the identical play they ran earlier that I guess they felt that, hey, if Dotson could have held on earlier, he would have made that catch, but Roundtree was there with him step for step. And I like what Memphis is doing. When you have a quarterback that is struggling, Make him go downfield because that is the one thing that quarterbacks don't want to do when they're struggling. They don't want to throw the ball downfield long because that is the one that is most difficult to try and play. But that was an outstanding coverage by Roundtree. Ben Graves averaging 39-5 into punt it away. Standing back 
is Arnold Jackson at the 15, and he goes down at the 18-yard line. Good coverage by the Tigers that time on the punt by Ben Graves. Michael Stone, number 44, a defensive back on the play. 37-yard punt by Ben Graves. A scoreless first quarter up to this point with 9.32 remaining. You know, Arnold Jackson is so dangerous offensively to receiving, but you know, to returning punts, he's just as dangerous, but I think teams know that, and they're really keying in and making sure that he doesn't get to the outside on punt returns. Redmond from the shotgun has triple receivers to the near side. And Chris to throw under pressure, fires, it's complete to Zeke Parker up to the 35-yard line and a cardinal first down. Boy, this is a good-looking sophomore, Cobb and Shakir. But I tell you, Zeke Parker is a guy that can get it done 17 yards on this pass play. Well, because of this multi-offense and all the wide receivers, four wide receivers, five wide receivers, you get a chance to see a young guy like Parker. And here again, these guys are catching the football for Chris Redman. When you look at Redman's numbers, you also have to think about the wide receivers and their jobs they're doing. First and 10 again, Redmond to throw in and out of the hands of Lavelle Boyd. Good coverage that time, double coverage. McKenzie was over there along with Reginald Howard. So that time, Memphis had the right receiver picked out to defend. But that's one of the things, Lewis, I know as a former defensive back for the Bengals, if you had a quarterback that threw it to a lot of receivers, that makes it tough on everybody when he well, spreads it, it around. It makes it tougher on the defensive coordinator because he has to find a way to try and put this defense together. So how do you defend Leroy Collins, a running back, Chris Redmond, and five wide receivers? On second and ten, they give it off to Collins on a semi-delay, and Leroy Collins gets it to the 40. Pick up of about five. Cusper Stiles, a junior out of Houston, Texas, came in here with 45 total tackles on the year. Well, Leroy Collins can really do it all. I mean, I'm telling you what has really helped this offense more than anything. It is the play of Leroy Collins, who can catch the ball out of the backfield, but more importantly, he has two 100-yard rushing games this season. Big difference over a season ago. And five games over 90 yards rushing. Redmond hit from behind as he lets it go. Looked like McKenzie might have been in on a blitz that time, had some help. But I tell you what, right as Redmond got ready to let it go, I believe it was number four, got him from behind. See if you see him coming in here. Yep. Yep. That is McKenzie, and McKenzie is the second leading tackle, but also this guy is an outstanding player. He's an all-conference player, and a player they may have to use some because of an injury at safety as well. Redmond, three out of eight for 40 yards. That's the first punt for Borseth, you saw, that covered 34. And the dangerous Damian Dotson, end over end kick. Dotson might have a chance to field this one, takes it on a hop, loses his footing, and he goes down at the 16. Good coverage by the Cardinals that time on their punt coverage team. Rashad Harris and Antonio Roundtree with the two guys down there. 46 yard punt, and now a very late penalty marker thrown right by number four, Gaines of the Cardinals, and we'll just have to check this out. I mean, nobody else was even in the area. On sportsmanlike conduct against Louisville, and I hate to say it had to be on Gaines because he was the only guy standing there, and then the flag went flying in the air, so an unsportsmanlike conduct called against Brian Gaines. And John L. Smith, not a happy camper right now. And sportsmanlike on the kicking team, 15 yards, first down. Must have been a taunting or something of again and go back out and play. In motion goes Dotson on first and 10 at the 31. They come to Arnold, and you let this guy get up ahead of steam, and that's when he's at his best. Bumped out of bounds by Xavier Arnold Burrell. Walker, well, we talked about Gerald Arnold. He's a redshirt junior out of Lexington, Tennessee. Was the top rusher a year ago, so this guy knows how to find some yardage. Watch this little move here. I mean, that is outstanding move just to get to the outside. I mean, you, you wonder how he made it. I mean, he made it just with a little hesitation. He saw the corner, set the defender up, and gained extra yards. That is a nifty little run by a pretty good running back. Averaging over 70 yards per game is Gerald Arnold. In motion again goes Dotson. And Kenton Evans, good time to throw. Now it breaks down. He runs out of the pocket. This guy can scoot, and Otis Floyd 
chases him down from behind. Well, there you see the value of Otis Floyd. It was Mike Gantos that put the pressure on him to flush Kenton Evans out of the pocket. But this is why Otis Floyd will play for you. He can run, Lewis. And he has a chance to get rid of the football. He is looking for Richie Floyd, who is running the corner route. This team has run several corner routes, and he is flushed out of the pocket. And watch this guy, Otis Floyd, a converted fullback, now defensive end, slash strong safety, slash linebacker. Third and short, didn't get it. Tried a little option play with Evans, and he was sacked up by Kevin Ware. Well, the free safety was right up there and had some help. Uh, we talk about Kevin Ware. He's a junior college player just trying to get his feet west now. And let's check down on the field now with Bob Valvano. Guys, to be honest, the beginning of this game is really going the way Memphis needs it to. They are a defensive-oriented team. Keep in mind, they have already played three SEC teams and a Big Ten team. Schedule's very good. We'll talk more about it after we take this short timeout. Scoreless here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. The offense, total yards against Louisville last year, and that's who they're going to this year. So the Cards going to have to make some adjustments both sides of the ball. On fourth and inches, Memphis going for it, and they got the first down. Wow. Rip Shear rolling the dice a little bit because he had it at his own 41-yard line. Anthony Bonner, the sophomore, got his first start a week ago against Tulane. And, boy, a gambling job by Rip Shear. Bud Herring was in there trying to plug it up, but Arnold knew how to find that elusive yard. Well, that is complete confidence in your offense. I'm surprised they didn't run uh, er, Gerald Arnold on the third down play. Fumble by Evans from the snap, and Kenton just grabs the ball and goes to the Papa John's Cardinal Stadium turf. Otis Floyd was right there to make sure that there was nothing else involved in that play from Kenton Evans. Kenton Evans and Damian Dotson, by the way, both parade high school All-Americans out of Westwood High School in Memphis. Uh, both recruited pretty much by everybody, and Evans has had a shoulder problem. He's actually got some arthritis now, but Damian Dotson's been the guy that, of the two, I guess, has had the most stellar career up to this point. Play action, Evans. Evans gets away from Gantos, and there's that arm is Dotson, but he couldn't get it there. Wow, Lewis, he threw that ball about 65 yards. Roundtree on the coverage effort of Dotson. Well, we knew that Kenton Evans had a slingshot arm, but Gantos putting the pressure on, but that guy really let it fly. And, and I'm not so sure what Roundtree was doing on that, on that play. I mean, Roundtree has gotten better as a cornerback, but that ball was thrown a very long way by Kenton Evans. It was a fly pattern Dotson went after the football, and Roundtree was about 20 yards from the ball when the ball came in the air, so I'm not sure what he saw. Don Bent, number 27 in, Louisville in a nickel defense now on the option on third and nine. They give it to Arnold, and Arnold has the first down. Penalty marker came very late in the play. Bud Herring chased Arnold out of bounds, but it is a Memphis first down, but we'll have to check out the penalty markers. Don Bibb also over there. It's going to be against Memphis, so they'll bring it back. Well, the option play has been open for him in this ballgame. I mean, when you don't play against the option every single week or often enough, you will have a lot of problems trying to cover it. This may be the whole heel by Sherman, the wide receiver, number 13 on the outside. And that is the second penalty on a wide receiver on an option play. The first one. On the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Third down. The first one was Richie Floyd, a wide receiver. This one is Sherman L, wide receiver on the outside. I mean, you have to block on the option as a wide receiver, but you got to make sure. Don't hold it. And certainly Rip Shear knows his offense has struggled enough. He doesn't need any penalties that will bring it back and now force a third and 16 when they just converted a third and nine before the flag. Evans, that rifle arm, gets it to Dotson, but nearly not enough for the first down. Courtney Dinkins over there, the strong safety. The completion out to about the 46-yard line. Yeah, he said he's looking, and, and Dinkins is a guy. Watch all of the space here between. Look at all that space between the wide receiver and the defensive back. I mean, Dinkins is a strong safety, and he's saying, wow. 
I am glad he wasn't further downfield. I've heard about giving a player cushion, but a little bit too much there, but it is a fourth down, low snap. But Grays fields it and punts it away to Arnold Jackson, who takes it at the 17. Jackson looking for a wall. Now he picks up a block and is finally knocked down on the far side of the field at the 33-yard line. Ben Graves, the punter, was the guy that had to knock him down. 46-yard punt. And this is the danger here of a guy like Arnold Jackson. You can see him come back, but watch. You will see a block being made on the outside that's going to free him up, and he's got speed to get to the corner. I mean, you always have to be mindful of which direction he's going, and most of the time, Arnold Jackson doesn't know. So how in the heck are the defenders going to know? Well, Jackson has one punt return this year that was called back. A dandy one against Illinois, but other than that, has not been able to get one in the end zone this season. There's a swing pass out to Leroy Collins, who once again slips and falls after a short game. Now well, we'd like to remind you on this Pepsi preview, a couple of home games remaining, Western next week on the 31st, Halloween weekend, and then the season will end with Army on the 21st, 852-5151, and I want to tip my cap to Pepsi, today's game sponsor for all their help, along with Kroger, providing an opportunity for a lot of people to come to the game with a reduced price ticket that they purchased and made it possible for a lot of folks to be here, and we thank Pepsi and Kroger for that. Good crowd on hand here. Almost every seat full. And the Cardinals get close to a first down with Collins. Manny Santabenez, the senior out of Miami. And Collins gets up hobbling a little bit. And Leroy Collins has a chance, Lewis Breeden, to become the first 1,000-yard rusher for the Cardinals since Calvin Arrington did it a few years ago. Boy, he has really brought life to this running game. A running game that really didn't exist a year ago. I mean, really has done a lot for me. Now Frank Moreau is in the ball game at running back. And the tight end, Ivan Green, makes the catch and again slips and falls. Mike McKenzie was right there. Well, Ivan Green, of course, a week ago played sparingly, actually in terms of catching the football. Had only one catch against Tulane. He was out most of the week due to a lawsuit against him that was dropped. And Ivan back now for practice all week long, and you can see him be in the swing of things today in that Cardinal offense. Well, Ivan Green is a big part of this offense. Second and six. Scoreless first quarter. Redmond, good protection. Fires Jackson turn, and when he did, the ball zipped by his eyes. So the timing a little bit off on that. Howard, the cornerback on the coverage over there on Arnold Jackson. A busy day in college football. Check out our Hamilton printing scoreboard. Louisville's award-winning Hamilton printing. Number one, Ohio State over Northwestern in the third. Tulane all over Rutgers in the fourth quarter, trying to stay undefeated. And Georgia and Kentucky locked up in a good one in the third. Our Hamilton printing scoreboard. Redmond out of the pocket, finds Frank Moreau, and Moreau is going to be close to the first down, but another flag. Santa Benez putting the pressure on Howard over there in the stop. But another penalty marker. Boy, Chris Redman was very close to being across the line of scrimmage as he threw the football. here you see the hole and that's Anthony Bird who has been the most consistent offensive lineman and so far in his ball game they have been plagued on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the side of the foul third down Louisville so far has hurt themselves as they are plagued by penalties in the first half well you know the Tigers got to feel pretty good because Louisville up to this point on the season coming into the game has scored and scored often averaging over 35 points a game God damn it! Stone sponsor here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Redman airs it out long. Parker makes the catch at the 20 and pulled down. No, he's going to score. Get 
74 yards, and Parker would not be denied. Boy, what a play. The first thing that's going to happen is time. Look at the time. Now, you have to appreciate the adjustment that Parker has to make, a ball thrown directly over his head, the most difficult catch to try and make, and he still, with the defender on him, gets it into the end zone. An incredible play by what will to be, what is going to be a very exciting receiver for the University of Louisville. John Hilbert with the extra point. He nails it to make it a seven to nothing game here. Well, he is gonna throw this ball in the zone between the corner and the safety, but the beauty of it is, believe me folks, a catch over his head where he is looking directly into the sky and a great ball by Redmond. And Keith Cobb was the guy that tried to wrap him up and it looked like he was going to pull him down, but Parker would not be denied. His first touchdown of the season is our Taco Bell replay here in the first quarter. And a good look now at Zeke Parker, the Junior Olympic Sprinter Champion in the state of Alabama. And our Neil Huffman Auto Group scoring drive brought to you by Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge. And that tells the story there. The TD actually longer than the yardage in the drive due to the penalty. Well, I tell you what, if you're a wide receiver, you have to love this offense because you really have a chance to really make some plays. Watch the adjustment he's got to make right about there. Watch the adjustment going back to his right over his head. I mean, he was looking in the opposite direction. And here it is again, just fighting and making the reception and taking the ball away from Cobb, the defender. Well, Cobb made a mistake. He had him around the shoulders, and then he tried to rip for the ball. And that's when he let the elusive Parker loose for the 74-yard touchdown strike. Here come the Tigers. They get a return to the 28-yard line. Stop made by Chip Mattingly, the true freshman. Well, in our Pepsi preview board, we'd like to remind you about and the Tafel Motor Company first quarter, and now the option to the near side, and Arnold has all kinds of running room. Going to have close to the first down yardage for the Tigers. Antonio Roundtree came up from his cornerback position, but the Tigers having a lot of success, even though they trail 7-0 now, Lewis. They get the first down. Success is coming running wide. Yeah, Otis Floyd is the player on the outside, and he has to play That's the option the back on that play. At the 40 -yard line. And he went for the quarterback, which allowed Arnold to get to the outside on the option. Now, Memphis, you would expect Memphis to run this play and run this play until Louisville can stop it. They haven't stopped this so far in the first, first half. First and 10 Tigers from the 40-yard line. Now they try to sweep to Arnold the other way and nothing doing. Courtney Dinkins. The strong side safety and Otis Floyd. Dinkins, the junior out of Detroit. 50 total tackles on the year. He's been playing both strong safety and free safety this year due to the earlier injury against Xavier Burrell. But Courtney Dinkins, another one of those young players on defense that's going to do nothing but get better. Now, on and on the toss on that play was looking inside. I mean, he is a cutback runner. And on defense, you play your lanes, make him go outside. That ran him into Dinkins on the outside twice already has caught the running back in the backfield. Option to the near side to Arnold. Nothing doing again, Courtney Dinkins. Well, Dinkins got Arnold when he tried to go to the right. Gets him coming to the left. Tony Stallings forced it in, and we have a flag on the play. A flag. Boy, it really takes a lot of discipline to play it. Here it is. You see it. Otis Floyd and Dinkins, one playing the quarterback, and Courtney Dinkins playing the running back. I mean, that's, that is the kind of continuity you have to have defensively to play the option play. I mean, if, if, if there is any questions about it, if you are out of position, it's going to go for big yards on the outside. Well, it's going to be five yards the easy way because Tony Stallings, the redshirt freshman, Lined up offside. That's the sixth Louisville penalty for 70 yards already. And that has been one of the things that's been somewhat of a bugaboo for this Cardinal team this year. Second down and eight. Second and eight after picking up five the easy way. 
Evans the throw. Looking for Floyd, tipped and knocked away by Roundtree, and Richie Pass Floyd looking for a flag, Floyd but finds none. Floyd from Kentucky, out of Mayfield, Kentucky, played at Graves County High School, but good coverage by Antonio Roundtree. Watch the end of this play here. I mean, that is a defensive back just going up, not interfering with the wide receiver, Richie Floyd, in making a play. I mean, Roundtree, boy, he's got some, as they would say on the schoolyard, he's got some hops. I mean, he just jumped up with Otis Floyd and made the play. And Roundtree came into the game with 11 pass breakups, and that leads Conference USA in that category. Picked up a couple already here in this game. Third down conversions in this one. Neither team has succeeded very well. This one in and out of the hands of Darius Blevins. Courtney Dickens was there, but Boo Blevins just dropped it. Well, this team really likes to run the patterns. Watch it. He's using his hands, but those hands were very hard on that play. I mean, he is doing everything correct except he doesn't catch the football. I mean, you got to catch that one because that one was a perfect ball thrown by Evans. So and the Blevins put it on the ground. A minute 52 remaining in our Taffel Motor Company first quarter. 7-0 Louisville. And fourth and eight. Ben Grays will punt it away to Arnold Jackson. This one actually goes by Jackson, a penalty marker, and I think Jackson might have been interfered with trying to catch that pass. Memphis had Fred Powell, number 23, and Joe, excuse me, Marcus Bell down in the area, but I think maybe that's why we had the penalty marker. Your Jackson was really not decisive on, on that play. I mean, you have to make up your mind early. Either I'm going to catch it or I'm going to let it drop. But they, he did get in what they officials refer to as that halo around the receiver did the Memphis Tigers you know what's tough about that is when the ball is punted away from where you think it's going to be that halo actually moves with the punt returner and Rip Shear, I think probably not real pleased about that yeah the football can really do some funny things watch coming into your right side of the screen watch how close he is right here I mean that's what they're calling now I don't agree with that call I mean I I, I think he is farther enough away where that really should not be called. Roll out by Redmond. Fires on the run. Complete the Zeke Parker again. Parker already has a 74-yarder. He fumbles, and the Tigers have it. A big run after the catch by Zeke Parker, but he lost the ball, and Memphis comes up with the loose one. Glenn Sumter, the guy that caused it, and I believe it was Reginald Howard that recovered it, number 41. Well, they are really finding some holes in the middle of this Memphis zone. And watch him, he's just, he's just going to be knocked out. Knocked away by... by Sumter. I mean, he has started his first ball game because of an injury. And that is a big-time turnover for Memphis. And the first turnover in this contest is sacked back at the 48-yard line. Courtney Dinkins again coming in quickly. Mike Gantos also applying some pressure. So with a minute 17 and the clock running, it'll be a big loss for the Tigers as they'll move it back to the 45-yard line. Now, Courtney Dinkins understands homecoming. I mean, Courtney Dinkins understands. There he is right there. See that 19? He understands homecoming. I mean, you get the way you get on television and get publicity is that you just keep making big plays on homecoming. Second and 17, they go back to Arnold and Louisville beginning to solve what Memphis has been doing on the ground. A host of red shirts, Kennedy, Mike Gantos, both in on the play. This is a Louisville defense, obviously, on the year, giving up way too many yards per game. Almost over 436 points a game, but... As you mentioned in the Bud game plan, what it needs to make sure it doesn't do is give up big plays as you check out our Taffel Motor Company scoreboard as we wind down the first quarter. And good defensive ball clubs play their best defense after a turnover. And on the first two downs, they have played exceptional football. Evans, play action. Looking long. For Dotson and overthrows Dotson, and there with him again was Antonio Roundtree. Well, you know, talking to 
Chris Smeelan, the defensive coordinator, he said this Dotson guy can run, and he said Evans has an arm. He'll just throw it up there and see if Dotson can run underneath it. They have been teammates all the way through grade school, so Dotson had the all-time leading receiver in Memphis high school football history. And Kenton Evans has made some mistakes. There were two interceptions returned for touchdowns last week against University of Cincinnati, but the balls he has thrown so far in this ball game have been on target, meaning he hasn't thrown balls with mistakes. Arnold Jackson makes the catch and takes the hit again. Michael Stone, it's going to be interference against the Tigers for the second consecutive punt. Memphis having some trouble that time, and well, that one was very obvious. Arnold made the catch, and Stone eluded his halo area, I guess you could say. Yeah, and I talked a little bit about their special teams and how special they are. But so far, with the last two plays on punt coverage, they haven't been so special. Five-yard halo violation. Decline. First down red. Well, that's the end of the first quarter. Taffo Motor Company, great job, and also did a lot of research on the Johnny Unitas Museum. Redmond to throw. Wide open is Collins. He has daylight and a first down up to the 40-yard line. Keith Cobb on the stop from his cornerback position. How about our forward statistics in our first quarter, Lewis Breeden? Well, Louisville's offense is just beginning to warm up. I mean, you can see the time of possession here in Memphis' favor, but the seven points goes to, to Louisville. But the big thing here is the total yards. I mean, they have, they have dominated the game, and they are really warming up offensively with Redmond and the receivers across the middle of the football field. The best quarter of the season for the Louisville defense. This one in and out of the hands of Zeke Parker at the 48-yard line. Cobb was over there on the coverage. But Parker couldn't hang on. Now this Zeke Parker, a thrill a minute, got great speed as we mentioned. We've already seen that with the 74-yard touchdown reception in this game. The game's only score. Also a threat on kickoff returns, and they like this sophomore from Athens, Alabama. Came into the game with 11 receptions. Three-step drop. This one complete to Sheffield. And Sheffield has his first catch in a Louisville first down. Sumter and Howard. 16 yards to Sheffield, who last week had nine receptions for 103. Well, Sheffield just coming in the game for Parker and watch the catch and, and the hit. I mean, he take the hit from Sumter, but I tell you what, he catches the football and hangs on to it. We've already seen about three passes from Redmond drop. Those are the numbers for Sheffield this season. Collins on a delay, slips and falls, goes down at the 40-yard line. And really, the turf made that tackle. We continue to see a lot of slippage, but again, I think this field is going to take time to grab hold underneath. And a little slippage here, you'll see. Boy, the little turf bugs have been eating up the shoes of the Cardinals running backs and wide receiver. I mean, they're having a very tough time, and Memphis seems to, to handle it pretty well. Well, Memphis plays on grass all the time, and of course, Louisville last week played on artificial surface. One of the best down at the Superdome. Completion to Jackson, and another Louisville first down inside the 30. Jeremy Stewart, Keith Cobb, and Arnold Jackson has a Cardinal first down. Well, one of the beauties of uh, Arnold Jackson, you, you know he can go deep, and you know he's not afraid to go over the middle, but the danger of him is when you don't have anyone around him, a defender, once he catches the football, because what he will do is turn up and make the additional yards, and, and if you let him get to the outside, he would take it to the end zone. And Jackson, just 11 receptions shy of tying Jamie Asher's record on the season. Here's Ivan Green. Another Cardinal first down to the 16-yard line. Well, you throw that guy into the mix. Stewart and McKenzie combined to knock down Ivan Green. You had the tight end, but you got a lot of trouble for the defense. And there's Ivan there. Watch his release, and he is old Mr. Reliable. Now, he's not old. This is his third season, but... I've seen this so many times, it just seems that he is so old. I mean, he has done so much for this Louisville offense, and with his high school buddy, Chris Redman, it is incredible. And the best per average catch player for Louisville at 18-4. Moreau on a 
delay, dives inside the 10, down to close to seven yard line. Shakir tripped up Moreau. We saw Leroy Collins earlier. Now we see Frank Moreau. One thing we haven't seen is a lot of them both playing in the first half together at times. Yeah, and Frank Moreau, who's averaging seven yards a carry, and we see the leg strength, and we talked about early in the year that he shed some pounds. He's a lot stronger and a better running back. Unfortunately, Leroy Collins is just so good. Moreau pulls his way inside the five. Going to get a couple of tough yards. Jeremy Stewart, the strong side safety, a senior out of Memphis, Oak Haven High School. And Louisville up 7 to nothing with 12 minutes and change remaining in our Pepsi second quarter, knocking on the door again. And, Don, this is what's so impressive about Louisville's offense. They didn't get started early in the ballgame. They've overcome a turnover, scored a touchdown, and now they're driving again. And Collins will take it into the corner of the end zone for the second score of the game. Leroy Collins beat Reginald Howard, and the Cardinals go up 13-0. Tenth rushing touchdown for Leroy Collins. Collins on the counter to the outside. Look, he is a cutback runner. And you have to be conscious of that because you can't give away to the outside. But if you spend so much time looking inside, he can take it all the way to the corner. And Frank Moreau with a good block in front of Collins. And John Hilbert adds the 14th corner for 74 yards. The Tigers. P.T. Jones on the return and has a good return. Out close to the 40-yard line. Knocked down at the 39 was P.T. Jones, a junior out of Laurel, Mississippi. Justin Thomas made the stop, along with Rico Williams and our Huffman Auto Group scoring drive, Chrysler Plymouth and Dodge. Three-yard touchdown run by Leroy Collins, a 74-yard, nine-play drive that took four minutes and five seconds to complete. And it was a, a very impressive drive. It is an impressive drive that I've seen all season long. It's a combination of the runnings of, of Collins and the receivers catching the football and good line protection on pass plays. Fumble on the first play from scrimmage for the Tigers. And Memphis scurries to get it right back. Kenton Evans went down on the Cardinal Stadium turf to get it immediately. <laughs> So Evans covers up that fumble. Bud Herring and Otis Floyd were both there. Second and 10. Memphis trailing 14-0. Art Valero, the assistant head coach. We know more about him in our Kroger halftime report. It's a completion to Richie Floyd. And Floyd has first down yardage across the midfield stripe into Louisville territory at the 49. Kevin Ware. The junior college player getting the start today. Good look at Art Valero, the assistant head coach and offensive line coach, will be one of our guests at halftime along with Johnny Yu. Stats and highlights and much, much more in our Kroger halftime report. Here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, under 11 minutes in the second quarter, Louisville up 14 0. And the Tigers in Cardinal territory at the 48. Try a little reverse to Damian Dotson. He has some blockers, and this guy can run. Finally runs out of bounds at about the 30. Forced out by Antonio Roundtree, but when Dotson gets up ahead of speed, he can rip it off, and he picks up 18 yards right there. And it was a good-looking play from the beginning. I mean, a lot of deception, and the one thing they can't do is afford to get behind early in the ball game. Now, there's only going to be Dotson, Seymour. Watch the outstanding block by Seymour. There he is right there on the outside. I mean, Seymour, the offensive lineman, came and made an outstanding block to allow Dotson to make extra yards on the outside. And Dotson didn't exactly put his head down for extra yardage there as well. This guy will, but he can find none because Bud Herring, the top tackler in Conference USA, after Anthony Bonner put on the pressure, Bud Herring, you talk about a good-looking group of young linebackers. This guy leads Louisville and Conference USA with over 90 tackles coming into this game. And they need more play like that from Anthony Bonner and guys like Derek Kennedy and Mike Gantos to really show up on the inside. 
I mean, when you can get that kind of pressure, it really makes it tough on any running back. I don't care who you are. Second down and 11. Evans, a lot of time, flips it out. Richie Floyd wide open at the 20 and is pushed out of bounds at the 13-yard line by Kevin Ware. Bud Herring in the area, but Richie Floyd, a guy that averages over 10 yards per catch, and the Kentucky native gets the Memphis first down. Well, Richie Floyd is, is the senior. This is a crossing route, and you see the light on crossing routes where guys are able to come all the way across the formation and be wide open because the defender is looking in another direction. First and 10. They try to bust this one with Jeremy Scruggs, the big fullback, and nowhere to go. Courtney Dinkins left the Cardinal charge along with Xavier Burrell. Jeremy Shrugs, 5'11", 220-pound redshirt junior. That's only his 15th carry of the year. He's normally a blocker. Yeah, and, and you don't look for Shrugs to carry the football. I mean, there is no game plan defensively to try and stop the fullback. I mean, he is a blocking back on the lead plays, on the toss plays. Out of the shotgun, Kenton Evans. Looking for Dotson, Courtney Dinkins on the coverage actually had a pretty decent chance had that ball been underthrown to pick that one off. But number 19, Dinkins, covering number nine, Damian Dotson. Well, if Dinkins keeps playing the way he is in the first half, just give the guy a kick because so far he has been all over the place, Superman-like. I mean, he has made several plays on running plays. And in the passing game, I mean, he's got to cover. This is... This is Dotson, Damian Dotson. He's a speedster, and he is right there making the play defensively. Front zone is into it. 14-0 Louisville, but Memphis, its biggest threat here in the ballgame. Third and 12. Incomplete, intended for Richie Floyd. Kevin Ware forced him to the sideline, and the pass overthrown, and the front zone comes through. So on fourth down, we're going to look for, and we see the field goal unit, and Ryan White, number 82, a redshirt freshman. All he has done this year is hit eight of eight extra points, 10 of 10 field goals, a long of 52, made four three-pointers a week ago in that win against Cincinnati. So this guy has been outstanding. Ryan White, a redshirt freshman. Place it at the 22, a 32-yard effort, and it's on the way and good. So Ryan White now 11 of 11 in field goals this year. His career mark in his fourth year after a lot of success at James Madison University. It's going to be Raphael Cooper at the 16. Cooper has an opening now. Has a great return up close to midfield, just shy at the 49-yard line. Michael Stone chased him out of bounds, but not before Raphael Cooper picked up 33 yards on a nice kickoff return. Yeah, a very short kick that allowed him to get going. Watch where he catches the football. I mean, it is up here probably about the 20-yard line. I mean, that gives him a head of steam and a, and a head start to get down the football field. First and 10 Cardinals, good field position. Just shy of the midfield strike to give to Leroy Collins. A couple of tough yards. Calvin Lewis on the stop. PNC Bank would like to salute the Cards Care Program, community action response effort. The big uh, Halloween party going on at the Louisville Zoo. Some of the student athletes will be there next week on the 29th and 30th. Then also next week at the Western Kentucky game, the police department will be giving away an inkless child identification kit to the first 12,000 fans. Cards care, a key part of Cardinal Athletics. And a whistle and a flag as Redmond had just taken the snap. So we'd like to remind those people at the Western Kentucky game, this ID card in the kit can be completed in the safety and security of the home. No messy blank ink to deal with. The information will be kept at home by the parents to be provided to law enforcement authorities only in the case of emergency. So another outreach by Cards Care our salute from PNC Bank today. Now they're going to move the ball back. 
It's going to be second and 12. Second down, 12. Chris Redmond with a touchdown pass. Collins with a touchdown run. Memphis with a 33-yard field goal. Redmond to throw under some pressure. Gets hit as he fires. And Arnold Jackson had it just go off his fingertips. I mean, Chris Redmond had his world rocked and still almost made the completion to Arnold Jackson. Wow. Memphis would come with the three-man front, rushing three defensive linemen, and will blitz. Blitz middle, blitz outside. Arnold Jackson, ball off his fingertips. Now watch him. Watch the pressure coming for the middle. This is the three-man front, but they're going to blitz people. And watch Arnold Jackson jump just a little bit too early. I mean, he is catching the football as he is coming down. Mistimed his jump and didn't get the football. Well, Chris Redman, you see his chin strap there. He actually already has a little blood on it. He had, of course, stitches last week, did earlier in the opener against Kentucky. Get him, I told him he had a boxer's chin, but they have a special gauze wrap around that. Well, actually, is just a logo on his chin strap there, but they have a special gauze wrap inside that chin strap because of his problems with stitches. This one is complete to Zeke Parker, who hangs on in front of Mike McKenzie. Well, John L. Smith was talking about Redmond. He said, one thing about Chris, you can never question his toughness. Yeah, I mean, you can't. I mean, I remember when he hurt his chin the first ball game of the season. He got that big cut. It was against Kentucky. And what the coach said, what John L. Smith says, the reason he was laughing on the sideline and smiling because it was his fault. And he knew it was his fault. This is a tough quarterback. Fourth and one, and Louisville going to go for it here at the Memphis 42. Redmond trying to draw the Tigers offside, and that might be all he's going to do. Nope, he takes a snap, but whistles blow, and we have the flag for delay a game. I think John L. Smith just wanted to see if the Tigers would take the bait. Dead ball. Dead ball. Delay a game. Five-yard penalty. So but Memphis did not take the bait. And now we'll see Jeremy Borson. Yeah, I mean, that was a good good little disguise by Redmond in the offense. I mean, you don't lose anything here. I mean, you lose five yards, but that'll give Borson even more room to try and put the football in the corner. The always dangerous Damian Dotson standing back at the Memphis 10. And Borseth, a beautiful punt. Dotson calls for it. Watch this one bounce. Louisville can't get there in time. Gaines tried to stop it, but Borseth did his job, but it rolls into the end zone. And that time, Damian Dotson had no chance of catching that one, but had a little decoy as he drew the Cardinal defenders in. And Gaines couldn't chase it down. So it's first and 10 Memphis at the Tiger 20-yard line. 14-3 in our Pepsi second quarter. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Dodson has caught punts for a very long time. He's a smart, crafty little guy. And what he did on that play was just fake the defender out, make him think that he's going to catch the football, which didn't allow Gaines to down it inside the 10-yard line. So the Tigers got a field goal on their last possession. Fairly 14 to 3. 6.45 remaining in the first half. They give it off to the second man through. That's Riley. Tefilo Riley. Knocked down by Courtney Dinkins. Riley now 6 foot 212 pound junior out of Central High School in Memphis. Came in here with 21 attempts and 110 yards. And he was able to get a touchdown a week ago against Cincinnati. So Riley 35 in a tailback now for Gerald Arnold. flag before we even get it underway. Well, I was going to say, I thought we had a flag and they never did march it off. I thought the officials had forgotten about Dead it. Dead ball, offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. So it is a five-yard penalty. Braxton Anderson, number 91. Let's see if we can pick it up here, Lewis. Yeah, this is the neutral zone here. And I think he may have touched the center here on that foot. I mean, and that is Chris Powers. First and five for the Tigers. Riley turns his way for a yard or two before Otis Floyd, the senior, came up to make the hit. 
course, Otis has played just about everywhere on the defense so far this season. Linebacker, of course, he's a former fullback, played outside linebacker, inside linebacker, and now settling in at defensive end. Yeah, he is the new slash uh, I mean, of, of college football. I mean, the guy's very versatile, and they are trying to find the best way to use Otis Floyd. Philo Riley's numbers on the year. This one, a completion to the near side. Ken Contain, a flanker, a junior from Miami. Again, Courtney Dinkins over there on the play. And Antonio Roundtree. The Tigers get the first down. You know, Memphis with five and a half remaining in the first half, down 14-3. If they could get two scores on their last two possessions of the half, that would be positive for Rip Shear and Memphis. And here's Riley, has a big hole inside the 40, inside the 20, and finally bumped down at the 11-yard line. Roundtree and Stallings had to chase him down. Well, we talk about Riley. He has a big burst of speed and appears to be a little quicker afoot than Gerald Arnold and showed it right there. Well, Riley, an unlikely hero. I mean, this is a team that doesn't run the football very well. Coming into the ball game, only 84 yards a game, but this is just a huge hole for Riley to run through. I mean, Roundtree is just going to have to hustle and get him out of bounds. 43-yard run by Riley, the longest run in this game. Now Riley tries a sweep, and Riley is going to get into the end zone. Well, Riley, they wanted a lift from the tailback, and the junior comes in, and in two runs, basically takes it all the way down the field and gets his second touchdown rushing of the season. And Damian Dotson, the wide receiver on the outside, will make an outstanding block on Roundtree. Watch Roundtree here. He pushes him to the inside. The only guy who could possibly stop the play on the outside is being blocked by Damian Dotson, the wide receiver. So Ryan White for the point after touchdown to try to make it a four-point game. And the kick is perfect. Five minutes and nine seconds remaining in our first half. Louisville 14 now. As his Tigers are right back in it, down by four. Cooper, a good return last time. He takes this one at the nine. Knocked down at the 15 and slips and falls after running about 30 yards and picking up very little yardage. Well, our Power Tail game summary coming at you. Glenn Sumter on that stop. Power Tail Wireless Communications coming to town soon with lower rates. Redmond, 12 out of 20, 203 and a touch. And Riley, 70 yards rushing on four attempts, including that touchdown that we just witnessed for the Tigers. Power tell, wireless communication coming soon to the greater Louisville area. So Redmond and the Louisville offense gonna try to get something back here. Leroy Collins tries to get wide and good pursuit by the Tiger defense. Short of the 20 yard line, Ian Williams, redshirt sophomore, along with Sumter made the hit. Well, if you want to know what's happening at Cardinal Athletics and all the sports, those are the two numbers to call. The Louisville Sports Report. Matter of fact, just saw Ron Steiner right in front of us here. A lot of insight on what's happening in not only football and basketball, but all the sports at the University of Louisville. Order it today, the Louisville Sports Report. This a completion to Boyd and Lavelle Boyd had the first down, almost jeopardized losing it. Corey Irby on the hit, but I believe it's going to be enough and is a Louisville first down, but Lavelle Boyd was doing a little dancing and almost gave it up there. Boy, La Lavelle Boyd was big time last week. I mean, big time. I mean, he is a tall, wide receiver, but here again, I mean, it is just absolutely amazing the way the guy uses his hands to catch the football, but look out, Lavelle. Don't lose the first down once you catch it. Delay to Collins, not much at first, and then Leroy able to get seven or eight tough yards out of it. Michael Boatman made the hit for the Tigers. Boatman, a redshirt junior out of Plantation, Florida, just outside the Fort Lauderdale area. 
340 remaining in our Pepsi second quarter. Louisville went up 14-0, but the Tigers scoring on their last two possessions to make it a four-point game. Beautiful fall day on homecoming day at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. We're glad to have you along for the cards on Fox. Arnold Jackson, the catch, trying to pick up some blockers, but not much where to go. Well, that time Jackson had absolutely nowhere to go on the little hit screen on the outside. Actually, he's going to lose yards on the play. Mike McKenzie, the cornerback, preseason All-Conference USA, brought down the elusive Arnold Jackson. Third and four. Three receivers to the right. Ivan Green, the tight end to the left. And they flip it out. Complete to Collins. Collins down the sideline, makes a great move, and then falls down at the 43. Jeremy Stewart, the strong side safety in the area, but I mean, Leroy Collins put a move on him and then just fell to the turf. Boatman missed him first 52. Now, Jeremy Stewart is safety. Now, he knows right now, after this missed tackle, that he is the only guy in the stadium who has a chance to make this play. And he gets just enough of Leroy Collins to get him on the ground. So a Cardinal first down to the 43 of Memphis. 2.22 remaining in the second quarter. Redmond earned it out for Jackson. Give him six. Touchdown, Louisville. To Parker. Reginald Howard on the coverage, but Zeke Parker. Well, we mentioned the fact that he would break out and get him some scores. How about a 74-yarder earlier? And he takes this one the distance as Redmond put it up and let him run underneath it. In football, like most sports, speed kills. And when you have a lot of guys who can run, it hurts even more. And Hilbert with the point after touchdown. So the Cardinals get this one right back. Zeke Parker's got a couple of long scores today. And that's a very impressive drive by the Louisville Cardinals. Matter of fact, good enough to be our Chrysler Plymouth dealer drive of the game. And look at it, aired out here, Redmond to Zeke Parker. Well, that is a great talk, but you saw the separation. He just beat Howard right off the line of scrimmage and, and caught the football. Two big plays by an unlikely hero, Zeke Parker. That one for 43, our Chrysler Plymouth drive of the game. Well, originally looked like Arnold Jackson number 10 but it was number 80 Zeke Parker having a big day today in our Huffman Auto Group scoring drive 43 yard touchdown pass and now Chris Redman has tied Jay Gruden now in the all time touchdown category so the next one by Redman Chris has 18 on the season and the next Redman touchdown pass will move him atop Virtually every career passing category in Cardinal football history. And yes, folks, he is a junior. And Chris Redman so far has had an outstanding season. But he is getting happier by the minute because he has all kinds of weapons that are developed for him on the outside. Parker and Jackson and LaBelle Boyd, Shedfield. All these guys can catch the football. To the near side for the Tigers, P.T. Jones has had good return of one, but this time... He's wrestled down by Justin Thomas, number 87, a backup tight end for Louisville, a freshman. Out of Sunrise, Florida, our Pepsi second quarter after that. Zeke Parker, electrifying 43-yard touchdown reception from Redmond. So one of 74 and one of 43 to Zeke Parker. And this is a guy that you just knew was going to really bust out. Check out our Hamilton printing scoreboard, Louisville's award-winning Hamilton printing. Delane in a big way. Stays undefeated. Georgia and Kentucky. That's late in the fourth. And Purdue all over Illinois on our Hamilton printing scoreboard. So the Tigers trying to come back. Dotson gets the completion from Kitten Evans. And Antonio Roundtree wraps him up. Dinkins also in the area. So with less than two minutes to go, well, Ripshear probably doesn't feel quite as good right now after giving up that long touchdown. And there's what we were talking about in touchdown passes in the career 
And Redmond still has the rest of this game, three more after this one and his senior season. I mean, he has had an outstanding season, outstanding junior year, sophomore year, and a freshman year. He is one heck of a quarterback. And the big thing about him, though, is he is absolutely fearless. And now the Tigers, I think, are going to take a timeout here. Well, we're enjoying Cardinal football. His look pretty good throwing the football in the first half. And as you see, the Tigers have been one timeout remaining to move it 75 yards. Evans, a lot of time. This guy will run, and he tries to now and goes down after a gain of three, maybe four. Tony Stallings was there, the redshirt freshman from Bedford, Ohio. Now checking out the Pepsi preview board, U of L basketball. Coming up on November 3rd, the men will have an inner squad game at 5.30. Then the Lady Cards will take on the Indiana AAU team in exhibition at 7.30 at Freedom Hall. Free admission. Hope to see you at Freedom Hall on November 3rd for the men's inner squad game and the Lady Cards exhibition. Free admission. Play action Evans. You know who he's looking for, Dotson. And Dotson's out there and makes the catch. Kevin Ware, the junior college transfer, getting the start today for Holman, who has a shoulder problem, got twisted around a little bit. And you know who Kenton Evans looking for in a situation like this, and it's his high school teammate, Damian Dotson. Yeah, why not look for Dotson? Now, the one thing you have to do for a defensive back is that at some point in time, you have to look around and you have to find the football. I mean, Ware never really found the football until it was too late in Dotson's arms. 40-yard pickup. Kenton Evans over the 100-yard mark today through the air. 21-10 Louisville. Just a minute remaining in a Pepsi second quarter. Evans across the middle to Boo Blevins. And Blevins is close to first down yardage. Memphis has one timeout. Bud Herring made the stop. And they're going to... That's going to be short of the first down, so the clock continues to roll. Let's see if Evans just will spike it here. He has one timeout, and may run a play. May go for the end zone here. Yep, he's going for Damian Dotson, and that stops the clock with 31 seconds. Roundtree there on the coverage. Well, whatever loss of confidence that Evans may have had over the last few ball games, I mean, he is regained all of his confidence in this ballgame. I mean, with the improvement of the running game that I talked about, they really had to run the football. I mean, they they have not run it very well all season long, and the running backs are running hard. Wide receivers have done a pretty good job catching the football for him, and now he has some confidence. That is a dangerous combination, a running game and a very confident quarterback. Third and one for the Tigers, but more importantly, less than a minute to go. This one thrown away, intended for Blevins. Courtney Dinkins on the coverage. Let's check in with Bob Valvano. Guys, real quick, you know, we ex-coaches like to look out for our coaches. Bob Petrino, the offensive coordinator, got to tip our hat there for the two long touchdown passes to Parker, especially the first one. If you remember, Redmond called timeout right before that play. And when he came to the bench, Petrino was upset he even called the timeout. He said, just run the play. Showed him what was there. All uh, Redmond did was look at Parker, and sure enough, it was there. He's gone to the well twice for two long touchdowns to Parker. Tip of the hat to offensive coordinator and quarterback coach Bob Petrino. And Bob Valvano, the hardest working man in radio TV today. He's been out here all day with radio and now with us on television. And we have a Taffel Motor Company post game show today. Field goal effort, Ryan White, he stays perfect. This one from 35 yards out. So Ripshear taking no chances on fourth down to put the points on the board to make it 21-13. A lot of good things going on over there. Hilbert kicks it deep and just does get it inside the pylon, so that'll be a touchback. And let's check in down on the sideline with Bob Valvano. Hey, Don, I heard you just mentioned tailgating. Well, we got the ultimate tailgater here. Joe Kahn, tell us what you're doing, Joe. Well, I'm the commissioner of tailgating. I'm going around the country looking for the best tailgating college team. And I'll tell you, Louisville is incredible. This is, it's, it's the fans' pregame warm-up. And I predict a victory today for Louisville because the fans are all psyched up. They are the 12th man on the field. Hey, keep in mind, last year he did a national ranking, U of L, U of L number two in the country. This year we're going for number one, Donnie. All right. Bob, has he got any chicken with him? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Leave a leg or two. We didn't get to eat today. Memphis has the first possession and the first carry comes from Arnold. We saw Arnold and Riley both play in the first half of play. 
Bud Herring, who we highlighted, made the all-conference USA freshman team a year ago. Those are the numbers on Kenton Evans today. 132 yards, 8 of 18 for the redshirt sophomore from Westwood High School in Memphis. And a quick flip. They're trying to get it to Floyd. Floyd makes the catch. Flag on the play. And he's pulled down in Cardinal territory. Kevin Ware over there. Boy, that time, Dotson just flipped it up and let Richie Floyd go and get it. And I think he was interfered with, but the catch was made anyway. Absolutely great coverage by Ware on the play. Now, watch him here. Never get his head around in time enough. Look, by the time the ball gets there, he, he just never picks it up to make the play. 34 yards on that play, too. I mean, at some point in time, watch his eyes here. He's looking at the receiver, and by the time he turns around, he just can't pick it up. And Richie Floyd, who has caught a lot of balls in his career at Memphis, makes the reception. And Floyd also been playing with a broken finger this year. The Graves County, Kentucky native. Into Cardinal territory. This is Arnold looking for the corner. Runs into Rashad Harris. And then he's pushed down by Gantos. So Harris hitting first, and then Mike Gantos came in to assist, number 74. And talking with Chris Mealin the other day, the defensive coordinator, I think he feels really good about a lot of the redshirt freshmen that are playing on defense. And I think you mix them in with some of the veteran players next year. And, of course, Chris came from Utah State, had been in Hawaii prior to that. And I think his previous five season, his defense had 166 sacks. So he's going to look for sacks in the future, that's for sure. Play action Evans. He's looking for Dotson and... Well, one thing about it, we mentioned Evans will throw it up there. And Dotson's got great speed, but I don't think he can quite catch up to that one. Yeah, and the defensive backs of Louisville are still having a problem picking up the football. I mean, that time, Roundtree was perfect position, but really never picked up the football to make an adjustment to make a play. But that ball was well overthrown. And we'd like to remind you, this third quarter brought to you by Tafel Motor Company. Louisville's official Volvo and Mercedes Den dealers here in the Louisville area. We'll have our Tampa Motor Company post game show today here from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. And this is Arnold running with his head down, looking for additional yardage, and gets a good gainer on third and long. It's going to come up short here. Mike Gantos, the junior who's played both tackle and defensive end. Going to come up a little bit shy on fourth down. And I think at the 35-yard line, Rip Shear is going to think about it here a little bit. But now he's going to bring out the field goal unit, or is it the punt team? That's going to be Ryan White. He's going to try a 52-yarder. He hit one from this distance in the Liberty Bowl a week ago in that win against Cincinnati. So White, who has not missed all year, going to try this one from the 42, make it a 52-yard effort. It's a fake. A roll to the right and throw and a completion to Kendall. So a fake on the 52-yard field goal. And it goes to the tight end, Billy Kendall. Well, Memphis that time picks up the first down. And caught the Cardinals napping a little bit there. Wow, what a play by Memphis. I mean, when you need it the most, they came up with to keep the, the drive going. I mean, a big, gutsy call by Schreier. So first and 10 Memphis at the 18-yard line to give it off to Arnold, and Arnold wrapped up around the ankles by Otis Floyd, first of all, and then had some help from his friends. Well, you know, if Rip Shear can get some running from Arnold and Riley both, he has a rather stellar running game, although on the season, less than 100 yards per game. A bit better than that here today, thanks to the running of both Arnold and Riley. Well, Arnold's a tough runner. I mean, you saw an example there. He is a tough guy to get down. I mean, the guy is only 5'8", but he is a very strong, muscular runner. Tough to bring down. Not a good per-game average in this one compared to Riley, however. Motion by Blevins. And they give it off to Arnold. Arnold has a big hole at the 10. Breaks the tackle at the 5. And he takes it in for the touchdown. Well, Arnold didn't get one in the first half. 
It was Riley, so he's been motivated somewhat. So an impressive drive for the Tigers. And a big play in that drive that kept it alive was the fake field goal. Yeah, running strong on the right side behind Seymour and Middlebrook. Just see him wipe everything out. Big hole on the inside. And nobody can get to him to make the play. I mean, that is, oh, that is the way to start the second half of a ball game when you're trailing. And Memphis going for two with a chance to tie. And on the option, Evans flips it back to Arnold, and Arnold does not get in. The official right over there, or did he get in? Yep, they give it to him. He right at the pie line. Rip Shearer was right there. Roundtree came over on the far side of the field, and he got just inside that pylon, and we have a tie game at 21. Now the official was standing right at that corner, and Arnold was able to smell it, and we're knotted up at 21 in our Taffel Motor Company. Well, it doesn't work, but this time it really, it really pays off, and it opened things up in the second half. Parker takes it back at the five-yard line. He's gonna try to bring it back. Nowhere to go as he tries to reverse his field and is knocked down at the 17-yard line. So Louisville goes on the attack. Glenn Sumter, number 42, who got the start today at free safety, also on special teams. And now it's up to the Louisville offense to get it going. And Louisville has done a good job all day, first half responding after the score. It'll be interesting to see what this offense can do to counter. And Redmond hands off to Collins. Leroy Collins pulls his way across the 25 to the 26-yard line. And Collins running very, very hard. And, you know, we mentioned the fact, as Bowling made the stop, with Richardson out, John Susky and both Joe O'Shaughnessy getting some play today at guard. Well, we can see at the point of attack here, Collins has done a good job running the football today as he's done every single ball game this season. I mean, he has run the ball very, very well. And speaking of John Susky, the junior still not O'Shaughnessy will be in at the guard position. Number 77, Redmond, a lot of time, flips it out on a little screen pass to Collins, and Collins, a nifty move. Man, I tell you what, that little juke got him about five more yards, and he left one of the Tigers in his wake. One of the players there, Camille Shakir, the middle linebacker, and watch this little move at the end on this play, Lewis. You know, Memphis is playing so much zone and spending so much time with the wide receivers of Louisville. It allows Collins to get down the field and you know, just that little shimmy move. I mean, he's done that the entire ball game. 13 yard pickup on that run after the catch by Collins. This one a completion to Zeke Parker. McKenzie, the cornerback out of Norland High School in Miami, six foot, 185 pound red shirt junior. But Zeke Parker today, if you're joining us a little bit late, had scoring receptions of 74 and 43 yards from Chris Redmond in the first half. So now he's into the act along with Sheffield, Boyd, Ivan Green, and Arnold Jackson. On the draw play, not much there at all for Collins. The Tigers were looking for it. Matter of fact, Leroy went down right at the line of scrimmage. Calvin Lewis. The left tackle, number 70, redshirt sophomore from Riverdale, Georgia. On the stop, loss of one by Collins. And now Louisville faces a third and six. Redmond today, already now the leader in just about every category in Louisville passing history. He's tied Jay Gruden's TD career mark here today with two scores. Redmond across the middle, wide open, a completion to Boyd. And Boyd in the Tiger territory at the 37-yard line. Well, Lavelle Boyd has become a target on third down. I mean, he is the second receiver in terms of making big plays and picking up third downs. I mean, he is a big target, and he is a favorite right now of Chris Redmond and the coaching staff because he can catch the football. 8 of 15, another first down. Redmond again to throw. Steps out of the pocket, fires behind Boyd. Boyd looking for a flag. And Irby right behind him. 
And the crowd wanted to flag, as did Lavelle Boyd, but we see none. Well, a lot of contact on that play by Kasha Irby, number 18, the safety on that play. But I tell you what, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a kind of a guy who will allow the defensive back to play because I was a former defensive back. Defensive backs very rarely make a mistake, though. You're not very neutral. Here's a completion to the near side, bobbling Boyd, but he was able to hang on at the 30. Over there was Mike McKenzie, but Boyd, the only question there, would he have possession before falling out of bounds? And the official right there and said yes. Boy, Lavelle Boyd is amazing, isn't he? I mean, Chris Redman looking to his left, come all, all the way back to his right to find Lavelle Boyd. Third down and three. Redman has a lot of options right here. Do you go to Collins, or you try to put this one in the air? He goes to Leroy Collins, and Collins tries to nudge his way toward the first down marker. Just depends on the spot of the ball. A lot of white shirts in the middle of it. Shakir, again, the middle linebacker in the area, number 48. And you can tell it's going to be shy on fourth down, and Redmond looking to the sideline to Bob Petrino. 21-21. Our Tampa Motor Company third quarter here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Glad to have you along on the Cards on Fox on a beautiful autumn afternoon on homecoming day. Out of the eye fourth and less than one Redmond on a sneak he didn't get it well might have on second effort it all depends on the spot of the foul the ball here I mean Redmond initially Lewis did not get it but his second effort gave him a chance at it anyway yeah, and you have to be happy if you're a Cardinal coach or a Cardinal player that they're not using the spot of the official on the opposite side did it look like he looked like Chris maybe wasn't quite expecting the snap as quickly as it came yeah I mean they really stuffed up the middle. I mean, this is a pretty good defensive line, and we talked about that before the ball game. And yep. he really made an extra effort to really stretch to get it as close, and just by that stretch, he may have, he may be a little bit short on this. I'm, I'm not sure. It is that close. You're going to have a chance to see it at home. Nope, didn't get it. The Tigers hold. I swear, it really looked like that there was some confusion on that snap with Redmond because he almost looked surprised when he got the ball. Either that or he certainly changed his mind immediately where he was going to go with it. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, I mean, you can't have any hesitation on this play. It looks like there may have been just a little, a little bit of, of a slip of an exchange. Something made him indecisive for a moment, and it yeah, cost it, him. And it may have been number 48 Shakir on that play because he just shot through the hole to make the tackle on Redmond. So the Tigers take over on downs in a 21-21 game. 7-3-6 left on the Papa John's Cardinal Stadium clock here in our Tapple Motor Company third quarter. And here's a guy that's been tough here in the second half, Gerald Arnold. Riley was the story in the first 30 minutes. But this time, Gerald Arnold, who got a touchdown just a moment ago. Now, Gerald Arnold has been the most successful on the option foot. I mean, not as successful with the handoff, with the lead, with the toss foot. I mean, I mean, this is one back set with the lead. It looks like it's an off tackle play that he cuts back, but he has been most successful on the option foot. Arnold 30 yards in this half alone. And Arnold gets the call again. A couple of really tough yards. Bonner a moment ago made the stop on that previous play. And Tony Stallings, the outside linebacker, red shirt freshman. Third, let's call it six. Third and six. Brown on its feet. Evans to throw, pump fakes, fires through the hands and incomplete, intended for Boo Blevins. Levins had a chance at it, but he saw it go through his hands. And now the Cardinal defense hold. Now the Tigers had moved the ball well, so after Louisville failed to get it on fourth and less than one, the Cardinal defense steps up big. And Evan has a man open, but you can thank the pressure just enough by Mike Gantos. Just enough pressure. 
that Evans couldn't get the ball to a drive receiver. Ben Graves ready to punt it away. End over end kick. And a very short one. Will go out of bounds. They mark it at the 41. So a woeful effort that time by Ben Graves. And Louisville will have great field position to begin this drive. Only a 27 yard punt. 21 21 41. Trips to the top of the screen and Redmond to throw. Flag on the play. Redmond wide open. Ivan Green. He makes the catch and steps out of bounds. But a penalty marker on the turf back around the 41 yard line. Boy, Ivan Green, I mean, he was wide open. Uh, it looks like that one may be coming back or isn't coming back. You see the offensive lineman standing around as though it's not coming back. They weren't even walking downfield, but you can see Redmond Hill. The defender is going to slip, and Ivan Green is just wide open. I mean, no one around Ivan Green, and he makes the catch. And the defense, penalties declined. First down. So a 27-yard play to Ivan Green. After the penalty is declined by Louisville, first and 10 at the Memphis 32, 21-21 at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium on a beautiful day and a great facility. Glad to have you along. Collins, good running straight forward inside the 25 and belted down hard at the 23-yard line. Glenn Sumter, the freshman who we've mentioned several times who got the start today. On the hit, Shakir also involved in that, the linebacker. Well, the Cardinal offense certainly has scored often and quickly this season. And you know that Rip Shear and his defensive staff have to think, hey, we've got to keep these guys under control, but they've done a good job of it. Collins trying to pick up a blocker and nobody there. I mean, that play just did not develop. Mike McKenzie on the stop. Take a look at our PowerTel game summary. PowerTel digital wireless communications coming soon to Louisville with lower rates. Well, that fake field goal was really big. Yeah, I mean, it, it got him onto the scoreboard. I mean, Chris Redman, we've come to expect it. If he doesn't do it, then he doesn't have a good ball game. I mean, the guy has really impressed everyone here. And Memphis has come out really tough here in the third quarter. Yeah, Redmond, three-time conference player of the week, only the second time it's happened in Conference USA to win it three times. Now Green turned, and as soon as he did, the ball was right there. Ian Williams on the coverage, but Ivan Green was the guy that was the intended receiver. And on fourth down, we're going to see John Hilbert. Jeremy Borseth will... Be the holder at about the 33-yard line, making a 43-yard effort with the angle to the left of John Hilbert. 43-yard attempt. Kick is on the way, has plenty of distance, and he missed it wide. So Hilbert had an opportunity and misses it wide, so the Tigers avoid a scoring opportunity by Louisville there. And you know, Rip Shearer and the Tiger staff has to feel pretty good about that. Louisville's moved the ball, but unlike most that they have this season, not been able to get it in the end zone on every occasion, Hilbert's going to watch himself on Pepsi Vision to see how he hooked it. And this game has the look of a game last week. I mean, with the two teams very close in the score, not knowing which way it's going to go, which way it's going to end up. Here's a completion to Dotson, and Dotson almost got away from Roundtree. Boy, that's been quite a one-on-one -on -one matchup out there, Lewis Breeden. I know in your days you had probably a lot of individual battles, but Dotson has been fought tooth and nail all the way by young and talented Antonio Roundtree. Now, Roundtree is improving every single moment, and Antonio did everything to hold on to Dotson. Dotson has speed, plus he has a lot of quickness. Give to the second man through. Flag That's on the play. Riley. Riley gets the carry. Big number 35 that we carry. saw in the first half. But we do have a penalty marker. Rashad Harris, the sophomore middle linebacker out of Huntsville, Alabama. Second leading tackler for the Cardinals to Bud Herring. Holding against the Tigers. Holding against Memphis. Well, you know, he mentioned... 
Chris Redmond was the three-time player of the week. Matter of fact, he's won it three of the last four weeks. You can almost change the name of the Offensive Player of the Week award to the Chris Redmond award. And he is working on another one in this building. Yeah, but the most important thing, and I think Chris will say so as well, I'll give up any award to win the ballgame. 21-21, under four minutes to go in the third quarter. Evans fires off the hands of Dotson. And that went over the outstretched hand of Courtney Dinkins that time. Roundtree was on the backside. So now Kenton Evans and the Tigers will face a third down and 11. Yeah, watch Dinkins here. I mean, it's because of Dinkins and that jump right there that forced Evans to throw the ball high, not allowing Dotson to catch the football. Just under 40,000 here today. Hope to see you here next week at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium for the Western game. This team deserves your support. Third and 11. Evans, incomplete. Thrown behind Boo Blevins. Let's check in field level now with Bob Alvano. Guys, you know when I've reported before, I said this coaching staff, a masterful job of being teachers, showing great patience, always making every opportunity on the sideline a learning experience. The learning experience today, frankly, was an emotional one. That's about as upset as I've seen offensive coordinator Bob Petrino, and his message is simple. Stop making stupid decisions. Second and short, get the first down. Don't turn us into a third and long. Across the board wants better decision-making by his skilled people. We'll watch on the next series. Graves to punt it away. The dandy who will back Jackson to the 29. Arnold with a little spurt. And then he smacked at the 35-yard line. Arnold trying to pick up some yardage. A 45-yard punt. 21-21. The Cardinals and the Tigers on homecoming day. 3-3-2 left on the Papa John's Cardinals football on our Hamilton printing scoreboard. First and 10. You see Georgia got the win over Kentucky. This one a completion to Boyd. And Boyd into Tiger territory and it wrapped it to 42. Wow. I mean, contact came from Ian Williams and also Irby, but not before Boyd. And you talk about a guy that has some hands that can hang on. His teeth might be loose after this 23-yard catch. Yeah, and, and here again, it's a crossing pass. I mean, he comes way from the other side, watch a little spin, and hello. That's a depleter. Yeah, I mean, thank you, get on the ground. I mean, but once again, it's the outstanding job of looking the football in and just catching it, and hello again. Redmond fires, complete the ball, and he comes right back to him. Lavelle Boyd showing his toughness again. Irby, who just rocked his world, Lavelle says, hey, that's all right. This guy has really learned to catch it across the middle. I mean, just a tough guy, but Memphis has to do something about the middle of the football field. I mean, once again, it is Irby on the stop, but they have been killed, and Redmond knows it, and he is finding the location in the spot in the middle of the zone. 19 yards on that play, Redmond on first down. This one behind Jackson, and almost picked off by Keith Cobb. That ball thrown a bit behind Arnold Jackson, and in the process of fumbling it around, Keith Cobb almost came up with the interception. Yeah, and Jackson thinks he should have caught. I mean, Jackson is the kind of a guy who thinks that he should catch everything that is in his area. I mean, in most great wide receivers will. I mean, that was a tough ball to catch, but it is one that he thinks that he can get to. Second and 10 from the Tiger 22. 21-21 our score. A delay to Collins. Collins cuts it to the outside. Inside the five to the four. Leroy Collins. The beat goes on for the junior college transfer. And I tell you, knocked down by Irby, but I love to see this guy run, Lewis. He takes it north and south. On the draw, I mean, when you throw it successfully and you run the draw play, this is what happens. I mean, it is wide open. Wide open, and Howard is the first guy to get there to make the hit. Watch it again. I mean, it's great blocking up front. Great disguise on the draw play. 21 yards on that play. Here's the completion. Touchdown to Ivan Green. Chris Redmond took a hit, but he finds his high school teammate, Ivan Green, for the score. With that 
touchdown pass, Chris Redman, now has passed Jay Gruden in all-time career touchdown passes with 45. He's thrown three today, two to Parker, and now one to Ivan Green. Boy, it is tough to defend a pass when you can run the football successfully. Ivan Green from Chris Redman, Redman's third touchdown pass of the day. The extra point by Hilbert is there. Chris Redman has it cranked up. He has three touchdown passes today. Give him 19 on the season. 392 for Redman, and watch this tough cookie at the end of the play. Yep. He didn't get to see it happen. Yeah, did he see the reception, but he doesn't need to see it because he knew that he was throwing in the, in the vicinity of this guy, Ivan Green. Tough tough tight end. Our Neil Huffman Auto Group, Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge dealers scoring drive. Redmond to Green, the final four that capped a 65-yard five-play drive that took a minute and change for Louisville now to go in front 28-21. Breaking all the marks set by Jay Gruden and Hilbert bounced this one deep into the end zone and the Tigers don't even think about bringing it out. Well, we'd like to remind you on the Pepsi preview board, a lot of things happening at Cardinal Athletics. Found out about field hockey at Cardinal Stadium. Coming up, Central Michigan at 2 p.m. on the 30th. And then Ball State on the 31st on Halloween. Free admission, UofL field hockey. Check it out on the UofL campus on our Pepsi preview board. Here at beautiful Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, Don Russell, Lewis Breeden. Albano, our producer director Lou Renoni, our executive producer Ron Mack, and all of our crew here. And the Cardinals move back in front, and now the crunch zone trying to help out the Louisville defense. Arnold gets the carry. Tony Stallings, the outside linebacker. Riley actually got the carry. We're seeing both Riley and Arnold as Rip Shear getting a pretty good play out of both of his running backs today. But the Tigers did tie the game at 21, but have not had an opportunity and have not led in this game. Kenton Evans, three-step drop. Now he pump fakes. He's looking out there, and it's incomplete. Well underthrown. Ken Coutain, Roundtree on the coverage. Evans still has not gotten up. And Lewis, a couple of times today, he literally has just simply thrown it up for grabs. And what he needs to do now, Roundtree, is go back and hug every single defensive lineman from making the rush on Evans. It is a double move on the outside. What this hit is going to do is going to cause the ball. Look at the pump fake. He's running the out and up. That's Mike Gantels. That is causes the ball to be short. Otherwise, Kutain is certainly downfield running to the end zone for a touchdown because he had Antonio Roundtree beaten. Well, Evans up and moving around a little bit. He certainly had his bell rung, that's for sure. He's a tough guy. You know, they list him at 6'3". He's actually closer to 6'5 now. Grown really in spurts the last couple of years, and really his fast growth pace is one of the reasons he's had some arthritic problems. That's very unusual for a young guy. But it has been a big day for Chris Redman, as we mentioned. He now is the all-time career pass touchdown leader with 45 passing Jay Gruden. Evans 58 yards in the second half, three out of six. And number 14, Neil Suber in at quarterback, and not even close to the intended receiver, Billy Kendall. Tough place for Suber to come in on third and long, and the Tigers will be forced to punt it. Yeah, Neil Suber, you can look at him here. He's 6'1, 228 pounds, and well, they say the guy looks more like a linebacker than quarterback, and you can see here that he does not look like he has the presence of Evans in passing situations. Fourth and eight, Ben Graves to punt it. Arnold Jackson awaits it. The average on the day, 36 plus for Graves. And Jackson started in, now he backs up, fields it at the 30. Nowhere to the near side initially, and finally steps out of bounds at the 40 yard line. A 44 yard punt, Michael Stone on the coverage. 
And first and 10, Louisville, with a minute 22 left in our Taffel Motor Company third quarter. 28-21, Cardinals. Well, it was so important for the Cardinals, for their defense, to get Memphis out after the score. I mean, that gives them so much confidence. I mean, when they score, when we score, don't let them score. I mean, we kick a field goal. Let's not give them another field goal back. So that was very important. A great defensive stand. Now Louisville's offense has the football again. And it's also important because Memphis cannot score and have not scored a lot of points all season long. I mean, if they have to play catch up from 14, 17 points down, I don't think they can do that. That puts a lot of pressure on Evans to throw the football vertically downfield to try and make a lot of big plays. Yet another penalty on the Cardinals here on the return. Let's check it out. Holding on the return team. Post scrimmage kick enforcement from the end of the kick, 10 yards, first down. So John L. Smith continues to have his team plagued with numerous penalties. Of course, you know, he made a good point in his press conference this week, too, and he said, you know, if aggressive penalties are one thing, he can take that. And he said, if you look at almost all the conference stats, he said, it's not surprising to see the team that has the most penalties a lot of times the top team in that league because they do a lot of things aggressively of course i'm sure that works to the converse as well redmond checking off at the line quick step drop now he's looking long for arnold jackson incomplete well obviously chris checked off there lewis he thought he had a one-on-one -on -one situation there with jackson against reginald howard and thought he could beat him yeah, Howard has been beaten on occasion by the Louisville offense and wide receivers and great coverage on Arnold Jackson on the go pen. I mean, and the reason for the good coverage is it's one of the occasions that he is, has his eye on him and he is perfect position making the turn running downfield. So second and ten. Redmond flips the screen out to Collins. Collins has three Tigers there and a late hit by Memphis. Kendron Ward came in, and then a late hit on Collins as he went out of bounds, and that's going to cost the Tigers 15 yards for a late hit. Well, you don't need to help Louisville's offense. I mean, Chris Redmond in the running game of Leroy Collins can do enough on their own. I mean, they've been devastated in this ballgame. Well, they're really enforcing that now, that if you go out of bounds and if you don't let up, you're going to get a flag. Watch this. Yeah, you watch him here. Watch the how close he is here to the sideline. I mean, there is the sideline right there. Yeah, and, and they're going to call that. I mean, they do not want you to hit the running back, wide receiver, quarterback. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yards on the end of the run. First down. Well, Chris Redmond, Lewis, now has gone over the 400-yard mark for the third time this season. Fifth time in his career. And as you mentioned, it just goes on and on for this Louisville mail product and a little early movement by the Tigers. Well, they're pointing toward Louisville, but Fryer either came across and was drawn offside. And the center's Arisney, I mean, he, he sees it. He feels it. He's just going to snap the football to Redmond. It's going to be against He's Louisville, away. so somebody did move. Well, Fryer indicated immediately he pointed. Dead ball foul. Dead ball foul. Ball start. Ball the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So he knew what he was talking about there. Well, the center was trying to catch him. I mean, he saw movement on the defense, but there was also someone moving on the offense. Ten and penalties, 90 yards now for Louisville. And that's too many for Louisville. Redmond with three receivers to the top of the screen and now a slot position from Collins who stays in the block. Redmond, Jackson's open and had to go through his hands. Well, Arnold got twisted around a little bit and was upset with himself. Stewart was in the area, but I think Arnold Jackson got twisted around and might have caught a glimpse of the sun as well because he was not happy. Let's see if we can see. Well, it starts with the protection here, but he's got the separation that he wants. He's got the ball that he wants, the receiver that he wants, and it goes right through the hands of Arnold Jackson. Jeremy Stewart on the coverage was beaten by about six to seven yards. You look at the sunshine Second high above the Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Redmond now in trouble and slips and falls. 
A big loss back to the 33-yard line. A lot of pressure from Fryer, but Chris Redmond lost his footing when he was trying to get out of the midst of a host of Tigers there. And the Memphis defensive line gets the pressure when it when it really needs it most. I mean, Fryer is a, a big guy, a second-year starter. Third and a lot of pressure up the middle. And the pressure up the middle for a quarterback is the worst pressure because it comes almost immediately. 28-21, less than a half minute to go in the third. Redmond, a screen out to Collins. And Leroy took his eye off the ball momentarily, so it'll be a punting situation on fourth and about 25. So Redmond eclipses the 400 mark once again in 98. And the fifth time in his career has already become the all-time passing leader career-wise in every category now. But the Cardinals clinging to a seven-point lead. Another day at the office for Chris Redmond. And because of a drop pass and a sack puts them way back in punting position. Wobbly, not too long of a kick by Borson. And it gets somewhat of a cardinal bounce and it will come to rest Ball down at the 37-yard line. No return. Dinkins down to stop the ball off the foot of Jeremy Borson. And the Tigers, after a 33-yard punt and 15 seconds remaining in our Taffel Motor Company third quarter, down by 7, 28-21. Like to remind you, if you want to know all the things that are happening inside Cardinal Athletics, order the Louisville Sports Report. Those are the local and toll-free numbers to call the Louisville Sports Report. Your source First for Cardinal Sports. Let's see if Evans is all right and back in the game. I think I see number 10, and yes, indeed he is, after being shaken up. Gives it off to Riley. And Riley, a pretty good gainer, knocked down by Bud Herring, but that will be the final play of the third quarter. Got a good one going on here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. But off the Riley flag on the play, however, as it looks like Riley might be a wee bit short. But we have a penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage. And that's one of those very quick early flags that may be an indication that there was some movement on the offensive side of the football. Well, wrong again. Movement on the defensive side of the football. I mean, that has happened to him for the second time here in the here in the second half. I mean, you just you just have to hang in there and not be offside, especially on on the defense. Five yard penalty, first down. On second down and short. I mean, second down and short, you have to get ready to go because the offensive line is going to fire out. You've got to beat them to the point. I mean, and that's what they're trying to do. But you got to sit in and wait for movement. Well, the beginning of the fourth quarter brings the wave into effect here in the horseshoe of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. First and ten Tigers the easy way by way of the penalty, the 11th Cardinal penalty today. Play action, Evans looking for the tight end and overthrown Kendall. And Roundtree at 5'7 was trying to guard Billy Kendall at 6'5. He was like a little gnat right in the middle of him there. Yeah, and you don't normally see that kind of emotion coming from Roundtree. And I know what he's saying. Look, this guy is 6'5, and here I am about 5'9. I mean, I can out jump this guy. I mean, I can I can play with him. I mean, he was going for the interception. I mean, the ball was just a little bit underthrown. Second and ten after the incompletion. Evans, lone setback is Riley, and Riley breaks through for four, maybe five yards, says Riley. To Philo Riley, a junior out of Memphis Central High School, came in averaging 5.2 yards per carry. Had a good first half, Tony Stallings. Boy, I tell you, the, the defensive coaches, when you look at Stallings, Herring, sophomores, two sophomores and a redshirt freshman what a great nucleus plus when you look at round three Holman really hasn't played at all today sophomores Morella sophomore a lot of youth crowd on its feet on third and four Riley trying to go wide has the first down and then some and finally Bibb just gets a piece of him Don Bibb chases him out of bounds but I tell you, he had the sideline clear there, Lewis Breeden, and had he not lost 
real estate, he would have scored. Watch the toss and the lead block on the Holman, Free and Riley. That play has been a good play for most of the ballgame. I mean, that is a quick toss. They have run it successfully. Stepped out of bounds after a 21-yard run. Ball at the 24 of Louisville. Now they try Shrugs to the near side. Jeremy Shrugs, a short gain. Well, let's check out our Ford statistics. After three quarters, Lewis Breeden, the Cardinals once again over 500 yards in total offense. Yeah, I mean, a lot of yards. Uh, a lot of yards, but the ball game is still very close. And turnovers, the one for Louisville here, that hurt them, but they're still leading the ball game. And, and they've got the lead by seven points. Memphis yet to turn it over in the game. That certainly helped the Tiger cause here in Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Sweep to Arnold. Cardinals turn it in, and I don't think he got much at all. Boy, a lot of emotion. Roundtree, the littlest guy out there, leads the cheers. But good pursuit by Herring, Harris, and also Gantos. Watch all the red shirts swarming to the ball. Yeah, here again the toss play, the lead by Strong's number 36, and you're going to see a lot of red unusually red with the red jerseys in pass today by Louisville. 28-21 Louisville with 12 minutes 44 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Third down and 10. Evans a little screen out to Blevins. Blevins gets a good block but does not pick up the first down. Roundtree did a good job of fighting off a block as did Dinkins. Just tried to get a little screen out to Darius Boo Blevins with some interference in front of him. And that is a pretty good play to prevent the first down. And I know that Shear was thinking, look, we've done it once on a fake situation. Can we do it again? And the Cardinals have to be aware that this team on special teams will do anything. I mean, don't take anything for granted. Fourth down and three. 34-yard field goal effort by Ryan White. The kick is on the way, and this guy is just automatic. Ryan White remains perfect on the season. As time that took two minutes and 53 seconds. Parker at the nine. Parker trying to cut outside, still looking for room and finally goes down at the 17. So Louisville now sees its lead at four. Ward on the coverage for the Tigers. Six yard return as Zeke Parker ran about 20. Yeah, guys with speed, and I've, I've said before and reemphasized, speed will kill. But guys with speed have a tendency to try and make plays all the time. And you, ha you have to be very careful that you don't lose yards on punt returns and kickoff returns. And sometimes the better judgment is to run the football just straight up the field and get as much as you can. Redman out of the shotgun and is sacked. Boy, for the first time today, it really breaks down. Tremont Lawless, 6'3", 239-pound redshirt junior out of Nashville, gets his fourth sack of the year. Yeah, and, and Lawless is going to get there in a hurry. I mean, Lawless is going to beat his man, and that's Mark Grevenick, all 6'10 of him. He's going to beat him very quickly and get to Redmond. I mean, Redmond does a good job, and this is coming from the backside. He does a great job of seeing it coming from the backside. Loss of five, second and 15. Redmond gets it right back to Ivan Green and a Cardinal first down. Well, win in need, dial up number six in the red. 22 yards. First down, Cardinals, and Ivan Green wide open. Yeah, Ivan Green is always there. Look at the lane here. I mean, just all wide open. And there's Ivan Green coming from the right side. And uh, if it's near him, anywhere near him, Ivan Green will catch it. Ward made the stop. It was Boatman trying to cover Ivan Green. A linebacker cannot do it. A delay to Collins and nothing there. Boy, that was smelled out immediately by Calvin Lewis. Riverdale, Georgia. Six three, 273 pounder. Had 20 tackles coming into the game. 
And we haven't heard a lot today from the preseason All-American, Marquise Bowen. The Marquise Bowen would drive Mark Grimner back far enough that Collins just absolutely has nowhere to go. Redmond pump fakes. Now he's looking for some help and finds Arnold Jackson at the last minute. Well, Redmond kept his composure. When in trouble, keep your cool. Number seven has done that 99% of the time this year. On the coverage, Keith Cobb, number six. I guess Jackson is what you call the hot man there. Is that a good point? Just watch this. Watch Red. Watch the president. A little pump fake. Arnold Jackson will read it. I mean, these guys are improvising. I mean, this is nothing planned. These guys are just out there. That looks kind of like a sand like Watch him here. I mean, he just turns in. Sees the defender near Jackson, and both of them read each other and make the play. On third and four, Redmond, a completion to Sheffield, and Sheffield hangs on and has the first down as he is slammed down at the 42 of Memphis by Keendron Ward, the freshman out of Memphis Melrose, but Sheffield catches it, hangs on. Boyd's been catching it, hanging on. Green and Jackson, what a, what a crew. Well, and so how do you stop the arsenal? I mean, Jackson is the guy you look for deep. Lavelle Boyd over the middle on third down situation. Parker has caught two long balls, and now here comes Sheffield. I mean, how do you defend it? Redmond going up top again, a delay to Frank Moreau. Moreau puts his head down and pulls his way near the 25 of Memphis. Camille Shakir. And I tell you, you got to give Bob Petrino a lot of credit. Obviously, to have a weapon like Chris Redmond uh, makes it really good for your offense, but that 16-yard pass play, that was a nice call. Haven't thrown to the backs a whole lot, and Moreau is wide open. There's a good look at Bob Petrino. Yeah, and Bob is happy to have so many weapons to go to. I mean, and they have developed these weapons during the course. That's the son of a coach right there. A delay to Moreau. Frank breaks a tackle, breaks another, close to the 15-yard line. So Louisville mixing up the run and the pass on this drive. Irby, the free safety made the hit. 28-24 Louisville, good look at Frank Moreau, who has, when he's been in the game, you have to say, Lewis, has been very productive. Yeah, that's a good hard run by Frank Moreau, and when you can throw the football, it really opens up the running game. And Frank trying to squirt forward for the first down. Had something come in late. I don't know if that was a penalty marker or yeah, I don't see a flag. It might have just been a bean bag, but it's going to be close to first down yardage. Our Hamilton printing scoreboard. Louisville's award-winning Hamilton printing. Purdue in a big way. Miami of Ohio and Cincinnati continues to struggle. Michigan over Indiana. Kansas State a winner. Nebraska and Southern Mississippi in the second quarter. Here's a completion to Ivan Green and the touchdown. Chris Redman is fourth touchdown pass of the day. Seven to six. Give the Cardinals six. Tell you what, it's worth the price of admission just to see this guy. Boy, these red uniforms may be a good luck charm. I mean, we already know that Ivan Green is a good luck charm. The uniforms may equate the same. And John Hilbert for the extra point knocks it through. A timeout on the field. 35. You got to get the right play. Then the quarterback has to get it. He's got to make the right calls. And then everyone else has to execute. Great execution from the coaching staff to the quarterback to the players making the play. 35-24 Louisville, 8.51 remaining in our Pepsi fourth quarter on homecoming at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Hilbert kicks it deep. Jones will take it a yard deep and bring it out. And is hit hard at the 23-yard line. Chip Mattingly made the hit. Our Neil Huffman Chrysler Plymouth and Dodge dealers scoring drive. Redmond to Ivan Green, 14 yards it covered. An 84-yard, 11-play, 3-minute and 21-second drive and one of beauty. Yeah, and what this does for Louisville and Louisville's defense, it makes it a two-possession ballgame. And they've done a great job 
all day long, not allowing too many big plays. I mean, we've seen big plays in a, in a lot of ball games where they were absolutely blown out. So Evans and company trailing by a bit now. Evans throws this one long. It's complete on the far side of the field to Richie Floyd. He was dragged down by Roundtree, and Roundtree still is yet to get up. 19-yard pass play. So now Memphis, you know, still plenty of time, obviously, down by just 11, two scores. But you probably would have to think they're going to look for Evans to try to put it in the air here. Of course, they've had a lot of success with some long runs as well. Yeah, and this is not a come from behind in, uh, kind of an offense. They don't score a lot of points. And the quarterback hasn't been in a situation where he's had to, to really throw the football to make plays to win ball games. This guy, Riley, along with Arnold, have run very hard today. And Riley picks up, once again, very good yardage. And we have an infraction against Louisville. Looked like an encroachment. Anthony Bonner made the hit. And again, we see Sumner, who got the start today. He looks like he's going to the locker room. Upside on the defense. Penalties declined. Second down. Well, Louisville's been, their defense has been offside on several occasions today. I mean, they've been very impatient on the defensive line. I mean, you just have to hang in there and, and, and execute the defensive assignments. And they've done a poor job staying on side. So on second and three, easily the first down for Riley. Philo Riley, the junior, picks up, only needed three, got about five. I mean, second and three is certainly a lot easier than, than, than first and ten, or, I mean, or, or second and nine. I mean, you can see the execution. Just a little bit of a cutback. The play was designed to go to the left side. Nice cutback. Nice run by Riley. And it was Farrell that had him around the ankle. Riley gets it again. Broke two or three different tackles. Picks up about seven, maybe eight more yards. I mean, this guy runs with authority. Again, Xavier Burrell. I'll tell you, the free side safety is probably getting tired of seeing this big guy come at him there. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the stats after the ball game, and if the defensive backs have more tackles than anyone else, there's a combination of two things happening. The running game is working. The running backs getting into the secondary, making plays, or it's the wide receivers making a lot of plays. Either way, neither one of them are good. Riley over 124 yards today. Better than 12 yards per carry. He's had some long ones. How about Riley on a sweep to the left? Stallings giving chase from behind. And Tony Stallings, I think, able to grab him. Had some help from his friends over there. And it's another Tiger first down to the 29. So Memphis moving it right down the field, trailing 35 to 24 in our Pepsi fourth quarter. Under seven minutes to go, Ripshear trying to keep his Tigers in this thing. And if they get a score on this drive, it's anybody's game. And Evans to throw. A lot of time looking for Blevins, who was double covered. Boy, Evans that time, an ill-advised pass. Had no chance to get Blevins that time. Xavier Burrell back there, double coverage on Blevins, and... It'll be second down and 10. Yeah, Burrell and Rashad Holman both back deep in the middle of the field. The one thing you don't want in this kind of a situation is to give one up into the end zone. You have to make the offense snap the ball as many times as, as you can. Now they give it off to Arnold, who has some fresh legs and comes right back in there. And he picks up some good yardage on third and 10. Well, of course, it's a two-score game for the Tigers, so they're already well in field goal range. They face a third and three here, but they're going to need two scores of some sort, a touchdown and a field goal, and a two-point conversion to tie with six minutes remaining in our Pepsi fourth quarter. On third down, first down, and then some Arnold lost the ball. Louisville scrambles for it. No official signal yet. Boy, if this is a turnover for Memphis, it'll be a costly one, and the Tigers got it back. Well, we 
applauded the fact that the Tigers have not put it on the ground, but a near disaster on that fumble that time, but Memphis able to get it back. Yeah, and, and watch the lead block here by Struggs. You can see him here. Boy, and that's just a strip of the football by Arnold. Watch it here again. Struggs with the lead block and all game long. And Burrell, the and guy. And Burrell who knocks it off. Yep. And Holman has a chance but can't get to it. Now a timeout called momentarily, and I think Louisville's going to take the timeout here. Feet. And encouraging the Cardinal defense. And the biggest possession so far for Memphis, the biggest series for Louisville's defense. First down. And they give it off to Riley, and Riley is pulled down by Mike Gantos. Gantos riding the back of Riley, and Riley takes it to the 10. Well, Gantos has been on a lot of plays. I mean, this guy coming in with no sacks, and he's had to play defensive end because of, and then switch to, because of injuries, inside defensive tackle, which he's used to as well. But he's a guy who's had to play a lot of positions on the defensive line. Second down and seven after a gain of three. Tigers run with some motion, and they give it off to Riley. Not much there. There you see the delay. And 59 was Matt Sexton wrap him up so now Memphis will face a third down and four the Cardinal bird trying to get the front zone cranked up big play on third and four four and a half minutes remaining flags on the play prior to the snap and the clocks are at zero so it's a delay a game against the Tigers there you see the 25 second clock. And Roundtree turns around and looks at the crunch zone and says, thanks. Dead ball. Delay of game on the offense. Five yard step. Third down. And what may be the biggest play of the game so far for Memphis in this ball game turns out they have a mistake. I mean, it, it, that shouldn't happen. But Evans certainly trying to make a call at the line of scrimmage lost track of the clock difference of third and four it's now third and nine and Evans is going to try to do it through the air being chased fires on the run incomplete good pursuit by Derek Kennedy and now we have a penalty marker on the play but it was Derek Kennedy breathing down the neck of Kenton Evans and the Cardinals are going to be flagged, it appears, for interference. Here's our referee, Randy Smith. Pass interference on the defense. Well, Evans is going to make his way to the outside to make the toss here. And difficult to see exactly what happened. I mean, he's going to get hit as he makes the toss. And that is Derek Kennedy, number 96. And they're going to get a flag and pick up the first down. Here it is again. At the end of the play, and they're going to say that Courtney Dinkins, number 19, is all over the back of the receiver. First and goal at the nine now for the Tigers. And nothing at all. Riley, the ball carrier, and the Louisville defense fired up. Boy, I tell you, a minute ago, as Derek Kennedy makes that hit, a loss of two. Certainly looked like Dinkins had good coverage on that pass interference call. And that kept things really alive for Memphis because it only not only gave him the yardage, but the automatic first down. Yeah, this is the time you want to sort of talk it up a little bit. I know Mike Gantos is the captain. Hey, guys, this is crunch time situation here. I mean, look at the clock. Fourth quarter, homecoming. We have to stop Memphis on this drive. And now a timeout taken by the Tigers. Kenton Evans didn't like what he thought. Evans from the shotgun. 
across the middle, fires, almost intercepted. Bibb had it in his hands at the goal line, but couldn't hang on. It was intended for Damian Dotson, and that time Don Bibb, who's been injured most of this season, plays a lot as the nickelback, number 27, the junior from Louisville Mail, almost had a big INT. Evans, 13 to 29, 200 yards and change. Third and 11 on the option. Riley ahead of steam. Touchdown, Tigers. I tell you, Riley and Arnold have been impressive today in the running game for Memphis. And now it's a 35-30 game, and you just know the Tigers are going to go for two. Have an official's timeout. And once again, it is Evans to Riley on the option. I mean, the option has been bread and butter big time so far in this ballgame. I mean, Evans is going to make a great decision. I mean, it, to, to run the option, you make good decisions. I mean, you really have to. And Xavier Burrell, the safety, just can't get to it. And the Tigers, indeed, trailing by five, will line up to go for two. Evans from the shotgun has Riley the back to his right. Two receivers to the left and two to the right. And now Louisville takes a defensive timeout. So that now Evans is going to come up under center after the timeout. Going to run a reverse to Dotson. Dotson makes a nice move and he gets into the end zone. That is sheer athletic ability. I mean, Dotson was a man that time, Lewis Breeden, with nowhere to go. But he used his athletic ability to find the end zone for the two-point conversion. Well, the first thing is the call. It looks like it's the option. But look here. Watch Gantos here. I mean, this is just unfair with Dotson. That, that is not a fair matchup. And that is a great play in this kind of a situation with three minutes to go for the two-point conversion. Nice pitch. You think Gantels can make that play? No, I mean, this is a guy who is 6'3", 270 pounds. Not a matchup, one-on-one. -on -one. And that makes it a three-point game, 35-32 Louisville. Cardinals have never trailed in this game. Memphis tied it up at 21 to begin the third quarter. And now it's a three-point game with three minutes and 10 seconds remaining. And tied a ball game. Cardinals think about a possible onside kick but it's kicked deep to Jackson and Arnold will take it at the nine needs to hang on to the ball Arnold steps out of bounds at about the 23 yard line Ooh, and one of the camera guys got racked over there somebody really got wiped out and penalty markers come very late and one of the cameramen I don't know if it was one of our guys or not just really got racked and hoped that he's okay on the sideline. Yeah, I think Ivan Green is the guy who's blocking on the play. You know, Ivan Green is a tenacious blocker, and he's just going to keep blocking, and it was very close to getting the flag even on the block on the sideline. That's Don Ertz, our audio man, and you could see he was shaking his head that he's all right, but I mean, he was just nailed over there and certainly hoped that He's going to be okay. And also one of the players for the Tigers on the field at the 30-yard line. That might be McKenzie, number four. It is. Looks like he may have a cramp. That's going to be a penalty against the Tigers. So that's certainly not what they needed is to give Chris Redmond and the Cardinals any better field position. Yeah, I mean, you get the flag here, better field position, but I think more importantly for, for Memphis, you may lose your best defender for a few plays. I mean, those cramps, I've had those things before. Those things doesn't come, they don't come and go within a couple of minutes. Well, Don's up and is okay. Don Ertz, our audio man down there. I Taking think, one for the team. I think Don deserves some combat pay. Looking into the camera smile. I mean, that is a... Uh, I didn't know camera work 
could be so difficult, so tough, right? And what's the first thing you do? Make sure that the mic still works okay. <laughs> Tell me he's not dedicated. I think everybody was running to make sure the camera and mic was okay as, a, as opposed to seeing if he was okay. Well, Leroy Collins over 90 yards again with 93. Moreau Can has 22. It? And now McKenzie getting some Yeah, help. I'm okay. And we heard from Don himself that he's okay. Doesn't get any di more direct than that, does it? And McKenzie, though, that is not a good sign for the Tigers. He is a key player, an all-conference performer. Many feel he may not come back. Uh, he's a redshirt junior, but has been getting some attention from some professional scouts. But that, you never like to speculate, but when you're a cornerback, you don't like to see anything happen to your knee, and it looks like that might be the problem for McKenzie. But everybody's off. We're up. 3-0-1 remaining. Louisville by three. First and ten from the 38. And they give it off to Frank Moreau, and he gets nothing. Cardinals obviously trying to use some time. Maybe a one-yard gain for Moreau. And nothing but a host of white shirts there. Fryer now is at the bottom of the pile. Appears to be injured. So all of a sudden... Now that stops the clock too with 248 remaining. <laughs> Memphis has two timeouts remaining. Louisville has one. John L. Smith wanting to know, hey, you know, that stops the clock when obviously after the running play it would have stopped. And there's a possibility the Tigers might be charged with a timeout here. I'm not sure. Well, they're going to call upstairs. That's Randy Smith, our referee. And every now and then, even the referee has to go and get a clarification to find out exactly what's going on to make sure he is making the right call. Well, I think it's going to be a charge timeout for Memphis. I can't figure why else. Second down and nine. Oh, Randy's a little confused here. Right time. That is a timeout. Clock was reset to 2.53. So they did charge him with a timeout because the injury late in the game, obviously stopping the clock when Louisville was trying to... To make something happen, keep the chains moving. Second and nine. A completion to Arnold Jackson. And most importantly, Lewis, a first down to the 49 yard line. 12 yard pass play to Arnold Jackson from Redmond. Well, big Powell players. Made to stop. Big time players make big plays. Chris Redmond is a big time player. And that is a big time catch by Arnold Jackson. Here it is again. I mean, once again, when Chris Redmond has time. He is as good or better than anyone in the country uh, throwing the football to spots. Well, Redmond broke his own record a week ago with 477 passing yards. Over 400 yards here again on a draw to Moreau. And Moreau got three, maybe four tough yards. And the Tigers probably forced to use a timeout here. Now the clock stopped at 218. No indication yet, but now we do see that is the final timeout for the Tigers of Memphis. And Louisville needs to move the football as much as possible. And, and you know they would like to run the football. I mean, I mean, that was a play they picked up three yards. And you know they would like to keep it on the ground, keep the clock moving. The day at the office for, for, for Chris Redmond. Second and seven, Ivan Green. Looked like there was a little reach in that time. No flag. Irby. Looked like he was ready to saddle up. Matter of fact, he was looking around for a flag. <laughs> he, he thought that he was hanging on to Green and was immediately getting ready to react. Watch the end of this. Boy, he just pokes it in and knocks away. I mean, it's, it's, it's only an interference. It's only a penalty. I mean, if it's called. Well, he was grabbing his right arm, and he shielded that from the official yeah. and went over the top with his left arm. I think that's what the crowd was concerned about. Third and seven, big play here. Out to Ivan Green, and Green, or excuse me, Sheffield, and Sheffield has the first down. What a possession receiver. Shakir made the stop, 
but that's an all-important Cardinal first down now with 2.07 to go. Memphis cannot stop the clock anymore. Yeah, and, and that's another one of those we weapons. I mean, blitz off the corner, quick pattern, Redmond reads it, and finds Shedfield on the out rep. And you want 500 yards from Redmond? Well, you got it. 506 yards passing Chris Redmond. 32 of 49, four touchdowns, and no interceptions. Well, that is the big thing. No interceptions for Chris Redmond today. Flag on the play. I tell you, this junior from Louisville Mail has just, you know, it's clock running again. First and 15 after the delay penalty. Cardinals just have to worry about hanging on to the ball. Moreau, a couple of tough yards. Going to bring up a second down play. Got a four-yard pickup by Moreau, and another Tiger is down. Of course, Memphis out of timeouts. Number 70, Kelsey. Tough, physical ball game. Redmond to Moreau, and he should smother that football. Able to get maybe two tough yards. Third down coming up, and Louisville should have to run one more play. Thirty-five, thirty-two, Cardinals. That's the time left. Louisville will let the 25-second clock run down as far as it can. Third down and ten. And Redmond just takes a knee. And that'll do it. The Tigers can't stop the clock. A 500-yard passing day for Chris Redmond. Number seven. Number one today, once again, here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Louisville wins at 35-32 over the Tigers on homecoming day. And John L. Smith's team now has even their mark at 4-4 four and four on the season. A winning effort for the Cardinals, 35-32. Stay tuned, our Taffel Motor Company postgame show.